Let's call the meeting to order. It looks like it's just us. Oh, I see Tegan's there. So we, yeah, hi Tegan. So I really don't need to introduce Donnie then, except to say, hey, we're so glad to have you with us, Donnie. Hello, thank you. Yeah, so we all met you. Yep. Um, so let's move on. We've got minutes. Oh, wait a minute. Are we, have you started? Have you called yourselves to order? Yes. I'm sorry, I'm supposed to be taking minutes. That oh, you are? That, yes, Rosa won't be here for half an hour. So what did you do? Oh, sorry. Um, I just said that there's nobody here who doesn't know Donnie. So uh, I just said welcome. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Can I just interrupt and say that is hot mm. apple crisp. So you guys should help yourselves. Ooh. Is there ice cream? Has everybody had a chance to look at the minutes? Uh, yeah. Yes. Any changes? No. I'll move to uh, accept the minutes. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> okay. Thank you. Actually, I'm going to put you down as I'm staying. Right. Yeah, because you weren't in attendance at that meeting. Is that okay? Works okay. for me. Okay, so four to zero, one next day. Thank you. Okay. Um, next up is board orders. Kari didn't bring the packet. So, you know, oh, wow, that was fast, Kari. Kari now has the packet. It was very Thank nice. You. Um, but you've all gotten the. Um, you know the basic list of what what needs to be um, what has happened. Does anybody want to look at the packet? Do you want to talk about anything in this? Because I'm thinking, although we haven't done in the, this in the past, we're supposed to do this in a public meeting. We should probably move signature. We should probably all agree to sign and then sign. Would you like me to put this off? Do you want to spend some more time looking at the packet? I like to look through it, but it's, I mean, it's the same. I never make any changes to it. It's right. just more for my edification. So, okay. Let's so just move it to the later in the agenda, and then yeah. we'll, we can make the motion if we'll we want to, if there are any other. Move it. Okay, I'm going to put it down at the bottom of my pile here. Hey. Um, did you catch all that, Barbara? Was, were you talking about select board orders? Yeah. Select board orders in order to give people time to look at them. Yeah. We're going to move that to later yeah, in the agenda. But it's okay to sign them. As we um, pass them around. Yeah, technically we're all supposed to vote, but sure. Go ahead. Good, <laughs> because I have. <laughs> Good. Pass them around, I'll sign them too. Uh -huh. um, all right, uh, you remember we had not warned. You remember at the last meeting we um, agreed to accept the money that Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission is going to give us for the Kent Hill scoping project. Uh, I have gone ahead and signed it, but I will need a vote to officially ratify the meeting. I mean, sorry, this uh, authorization to sign it. Will somebody please move that? Uh, so moved. Barbara, you got that. You uh -huh. understand what's going on. Do we have a second? Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. We need a vice chair. We don't have Gabrielle. Would somebody like to nominate? I'm going to open the floor to nominations for vice chair. I would nominate Jordan to be vice chair mm -hmm. if he were so willing and serving in the position. Oh, thanks, Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd be willing to accept that nomination. Oh, thanks, Jordan. No problem. Um, do, do we need to second those? I'm not sure. Is there a second? I'll second it. Oh, thank you. Does anybody want, I assume there are no further nominations given that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, and Jordan is our new vice chair. Congratulations, and wait till Rachel here, she'll be sad. Yeah, she'll have to read the minutes. <laughs> we'll see how that plays out. All right, I assume nobody has any comments. Is there anybody from the public there that, uh, Peter Harvey, I see, is there. Is there anybody from the public who would like to speak on an issue that we're not going to be so. um, dealing with later on? In, well, people on Zoom aren't participating, are they? So we'll pass over that one. Um, and now we have Rick. I'm sorry, what's Rick's last name? Brigham. Brigham. Brigham Young. We have Easy. Rick Brigham Young. 
Uh, or no, Brigham, like as Brigham. In Brigham Young. Oh, like Brigham Young. Okay. <laughs> um, welcome to Brick, uh, Rick from um, Sullivan and Powers, who is going to present the town audit that they carried out last summer. So, Rick, do, are you going to talk us through it a little bit? Sure. Do you have the copies of the reports in front of you? Perfect. So. What I'd like to do is just kind of uh, spend a few minutes kind of running, uh, running through what the audit report looks like and the different sections, kind of explain it, mm -hmm. uh, kind of go over. I took some time this afternoon, went through it, and I'm going to highlight a few items that I thought as I was kind of reading through it, a fresh perspective time that I thought would be interesting to the board and, uh, and going through the stuff. Um, obviously, there's a lot here. It's, it's you know, it's a 50, almost 50 page report. Um, my charge as your auditor is really pages one through three or one through four. That is what we call the auditor's opinion. So all the things that go into the financial statements throughout the year, paying bills, paying payroll, taking in taxes, receipts, all that stuff builds into the books. My job is to come in at the end of the year and do some testing, test transactions, account balances, um, confirm balances with banks, uh, review invoices. That's all part of the audit process. But my ultimate goal is this opinion here. So this opinion basically has three choices. It's a, you can have a, a uh, adverse opinion, which means your financial statements are not fairly stated, or you can have a qualified opinion, which means they're fairly stated except for, or you can have an unmodified or unqualified opinion. Uh, for almost all your funds, as you see the, in the middle of page one there, almost all your funds have an unmodified, which is the best you can have as far as an audit opinion goes. There is one qualification that you had for a few years related to the cemetery fund that relates to the investments being carried at market value rather than cost. Um, I know my business partner, Fred, has talked with the board about that over the last few years when he was here doing these uh, audit reviews and talked about the uh, you know what the qualification was for and why like we said basically back down to you know the standard say mark uh, investments under the modified cash basis have to be carried at cost and i don't think that those numbers were readily available so they're carried at market value which quite honestly is more usable number um, but so that's the only real qualification to the report other than that everything else was unqualified which is, like I said, the best you can get. And I always like to, um, you know, congratulate organizations that achieve those results of unqualified opinion. I do a lot of these board meetings, and a lot, you know, I've done some adverse uh, opinions and many much more qualified opinions. So, um, again, a lot of work goes into this from Sandra, from the board, from all the staff there. And I just wanted to congratulate them on, again, a, a mostly unqualified opinion. If we're looking at pages five and six, that's what we call, we basically have two kinds of financials in the audit report. There's what we call the government-wide financials, and then there's the fund financials. The government-wide financials, which is are on pages five and six, are basically a balance sheet and income statement of what, you of what happened for the whole organization. All the funds combined together, rolled up into, this, into, the, these, into these columns and shown on this, uh, like I said, if you're looking at page five, it's a balance sheet. So under the modified uh, uh, cash basis of accounting, this is what your balance sheet looked like uh, with all the funds being combined in there. And then if you look at page six, this is what your income statement would look like with all the funds, you know, as far as being combined into the government wide. If you look at page seven, that's more what people are focusing on when they're looking at their auto reports for governmental accounting. These are what we call the fund financials. You'll see here, these are, uh, there's five major funds based on calculations that go in total assets, revenues, expenditures, the, uh, the standards spit out kind of what are your major funds. These are your major funds um, uh, for the town of Callis. Kind of going down, looking at page seven, like I said, this is a snapshot in time of what the general fund, highway fund, cemetery, and ARPA funds look like at June 30, 2023. Little things to point out here. Uh, in the general fund, you can see your fund balance uh, is sitting at 412,946 at the end of the year. 
Uh, the highway fund is back down to a zero because I believe uh, most of that got transferred out. Any sort of surplus got transferred into the highway equipment fund at year end. And then uh, the cemetery fund is sitting with 234,522. ARPA is sitting with 245,200. Going to page eight, this is the same funds basically looking at a, uh, an income statement of what happened, revenues and expenses in these funds during the year. Um, like I said, you went from a fund balance in the general fund of 532 down to 412. So there was a net reduction in the uh, fund balance of about 119,660 in the general fund. And the highway fund uh, had a small deficit in the previous year, which was more than made up for um, this year in the excess reserve was transferred into the highway equipment, leaving it with a zero fund balance. Uh, looks like you spent, you know, you got in some more ARPA money. It looks like you've spent a lot of your ARPA money. And so you're sitting with that about 245200 at the end of the year. Kind of skipping over to pages, page 11 through 28. Or actually, uh, you know, yeah, 8, 11 through 28. These are what we call the notes to the financial statements. If you're looking for terms of what your debt, um, your debt, uh, interest rates are, loan balances, what your uncollateralized cash is, what your collateralized cash, what your restricted fund balance. There, uh, there's a deep dive level in, of information into these notes. It would take too much time to kind of go through them all tonight, but just know if you're looking for specific information related to the balance sheet or to fund balances, the, these notes are a great place to go to get more detailed information on that. One thing I did want to point out in the notes as I was going through it, I'm, I'm sure everybody's well aware of this, but I did notice that when I'm looking at pages 27 through 28, which uh, have all the debt instruments that the town had, starting with the beginning balance, right, right through showing the ending balances of the debt at the end of the year, looks like you paid off a lot of debt during the year, which I, I thought was, uh, which was very good and important to note to people that, you know, uh, the debt went down from 212,945 at the beginning of the year down to 118,000 of total debt at the end of the year. I know there was some uh, uh, subsequent debt that was taken out after year end. We always disclose that at the end of page 28, just so that every, the readers are aware that this is where the debt stood and here's what's happened since. And looking at the uh, uh, pages 29 through 33, this is probably what you're more used to seeing throughout the year from Sandra, uh, looking at the budget versus actual of the general fund. Uh, I kind of went through it again today, looking at things that kind of stuck out to me. Obviously, the big thing for me was the uh, we like we had meant like I'd mentioned at the beginning, your fund balance went down about 119,000. A lot of that seemed to be in, in legal fees, which I know I dug into a, quite a bit when I was there as far as reviewing those costs and invoices and stuff. And so there was a, you were about 102,000 spent over budget on that. Um, looking at other things that sort of stuck out to me, the town treasurer wages were down, but the contracts with Nemrick were up. So those kind of were offsets. Um, and then looking at like page 32, I just noticed that the, there was a town hall renovation loan, which we budgeted at 40 and paid 80. I think that was a pure timing difference of when a bill, when, when one, one of the notes got paid uh, at the beginning of the year that uh, it got paid at the beginning of the year and then probably in June of this year. So it ends up going in there twice. And then uh, looking at page 34 through 35, this is the same kind of format, looking at the highway fund, looking at the individual uh, revenues expenses versus their budget. The things that stuck out to me on this were uh, the Moscow Woods grant income and the Lightning Ridge grant income, which weren't necessarily budgeted for, came in this year on projects that I think had already been done. So those were surplus revenues that came in. And, and then I noticed that there was a lot more spent under the road maintenance item on road signs. Like it was budgeted mm -hmm. at 3,000 and spent about 55,000 on that. So there was an overage in that as well as overage in the vehicle equipment and repair line item at the bottom of 34, about a $40,000 overage on the uh, vehicle re uh, repairs. 
And then if you're looking for the rest of the funds, the, what we call the non-major funds, there's a lot of them back here, uh, back pages 38, 39 through 41. These are all your small funds. Again, same kind of reports back here, giving you where the fund balances sit, what, what are the assets and liabilities of each of the funds, and where the revenues went from the beginning of the year to the end of the year. Nothing there struck out, struck out, stuck out to me to be able to communicate to everybody there. As part of the audit report, one of the things we're required to do is, um, is report on any material weaknesses or significant deficiencies that we found in the audit. Um, again, congratulations on that. During our audit, we did not note any significant deficiencies or material weaknesses that needed to be reported in the audit. A couple other required communications that we need to do as part of this board contact is to let you know that we encouraged, we encountered no difficulties in dealing with management. We had no disagreements with management. There were no consultations with other accountants or auditors on any technical issues. And all entries that we proposed were posted, so there were no unposted entries to the financial statements. That's pretty much my quick synopsis of, of the audit report. Like I said, I thought it went very well. Everybody was extremely helpful and the process went very smoothly. And I know you guys have been going through a lot with the floods and stuff and, and uh, even getting through all that, it, we certainly were able to get everything done, which was great and fairly and timely too, so. All right, thank you, Rick. Um, now let's open it up to questions. Anybody? No questions? I, I'd, I have one. Um, I'm trying to understand, you, you have qualified the uh, cemetery endowment because you say we should be using historic cost, I, I, I just need to understand that a little better, historic cost instead of um, current market cost. Value. Yeah, market well, instead value. of current market value. Like if you look at your investment statements, those would be market value. Uh, if you're, we, you guys are uh, operating under the modified cash basis of accounting, and under that standard, investments are to be carried at cost because that's what you paid for them. So if you paid $100,000 for AT&T stock and now it's worth 150, they would want you to carry it at the 100. And I think those investments are probably so old that nobody has the historical carrying amount of those costs. So it's digging up those numbers. My partner always says, you know, if you really want to get rid of the qualification, you could sell the investments and buy them back the next day and then cost and market are exactly the same. So, but it's really been a, a, a qualification that's been in the report for a few years. Um, it, but quite honestly, like I said, that's the standard that we all have to live by because of the modified cash. But I actually think that having the investments in market is, a, is actually a better indication of where you stand, to be honest with you. That's okay, something I'm not supposed to say, but I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, you've answered my question because it, I don't understand. What I want to know is how much money I have now. Exactly. I get that. And, that. and that's why, to me, I don't rate the standards. I just have to abide by them. So if, you know, if we, if we had the historical cost and we record it, you wouldn't have the qualification. But still, I feel, looking at your reports, that the market value is a better indicator and better idea of where your financial position is. Thank you. That touched on what I was going to ask, Rick, is just for our education, would you say a little bit more about the modified cash accounting basis and how it's different from say accrual or another basis that people are more used to? Sure. So a lot of small towns, you know, all towns have that option of, of going to, mo uh, to what we call modified cash basis or modified accrual basis. In modified accrual basis, you know, there's a lot more work that goes into that as far as booking payables, booking accrued payroll, booking prepaid expenses, booking pension deferred inflows and outflows, booking lease obligations, booking debt into your financial statement. So there's a lot of complicated factors that go into it where small towns don't have the re really the resources to, to generate all those calculations. And so a lot of smaller towns will choose to do the modified cash basis, which is still a legitimate and probably in some ways it's how they operate all year anyway. So probably a little bit more um, clarity as to, you know, consistency as to what you've seen all year long. 
a lot of these audits that we do for the modified accrual, they adjust those liabilities at one time a year and that's it. And so the board's been seeing everything cash basis all year, but then they get one accrual basis report at the end of the year. For me, it's all about, there's a lot of, a lot of work that goes into a modified accrual basis report, a lot of calculations that the treasurer and the finance team have to understand to be able to accept the report. You know, I prepare the audit report, but it's really your numbers. And if you can't review it and, and understand it or have to, you know, don't get the calculations or how they all work, then I really can't issue an audit report. It's really an audit opinion. And that's really based on professional standards. Thank you. Thanks. Yep. Everybody happy? <laughs> wow. Thanks, Rick, and thanks for your kind words. Um, we know Sandra's a magician and wonderful. It's, it's, so. it's always a pleasure working with Sandra. I bet. <laughs> um, shall we vote then to accept it? Is that the next step? Is there anything else we need to do? I don't think there's anything else that you can accept it, and then I'll get uh, Sandra a client rep letter. We'll get that back and get you final copies. Okay, then. I'll take a motion to accept the audit as presented to us. So moved. It's been moved. Is it seconded? Second. Either. You can pick whichever one you want, Barbara. Take the first one. Any <laughs> further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Well, thanks, Rick. Um, Thank you very much. We're also, we have another contract in front of us here. Um, okay. I don't know whether you're presenting that. I, have we all had a chance to read this? For This would be for audit next year plus any um, single audits that you do during the course of the year, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Does anybody have any questions about this? It's a two-year agreement. Uh, yes, it's two years. It covers two years. Sorry. So it's a it's a certain amount. It's eighteen four hundred each year plus uh, six thousand for one single audit and four thousand for each additional single audits, right? Okay. Shall we? Um, looks like we all have to sign this. So I'll take a motion to. Sign Can I ask one quick Please? question. Mm -hmm. um, for the single audit, it says the fee for the single audit is six thousand for one major program and four thousand for additional major programs. Do we just have yes. one major program anticipated? My guess, I, I would never know that until I see your schedule of federal awards, which is uh, a, literally a uh, a schedule of all the federal expenditures that happened during what will be the 24 year. When I get that, then I'll be able to know how many majors, but basically if you have over 750,000 in one program, which I'm gonna assume is FEMA, that's gonna be a major program. I assume you won't have any other programs that have over that amount that would require a single or would require to be major programs. But if let's say you got some sort of uh, AOT grant for a different CFDA number that was a different a million dollars, that could lead you to a second major program. Because we basically have to treat each major, major program and test it separately according to the compliance requirements set out by, uh, by the standards boards. Great, thank you. Okay, thanks. So um, I'll take a motion to sign this. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Rick. Thank you very much. Have a good meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Um, wow. This is so unusual. We are way ahead of schedule. <laughs> you shouldn't have said that. <laughs> oh, all the more time to do the fun stuff with the budget. Um, Sandra, you've given us this internal financial controls checklist. Could you tell us what this is about? I think oh. Kari has to unmute her. Oh, no. Can I do that? <laughs> I can ask her. I think I'll mute it now. I'm yep. going to see. There you are. Internal. Yep. <clears throat> What's the title of it? Here? 
It's this thing here that was in your in your Google Docs internal control internal financial controls checklist for municipalities. It's the bottom last document in the folder. So that document that you are looking at now is uh, originated in the Vermont statutes and is required of all governmental entities as well as school districts to be presented to the board once a year um, for acceptance so that you can, so that the board uh, can understand what internal controls are being used. It is somewhat archaic. It kind of changes tenses at times. It, it refers to the board and then it refers to the treasurer. It's not a very elegant document document, but it is the document that the statute requires be filled out. I suspect um, at some point in time, you know, a lot of towns don't get audits. And so this is a, a small lens over how the uh, financial office is managing its internal controls for the board it's not anything that we have generated <laughs> or would ever generate, but um, the statute asks your uh, ask for me to present it to the board and for the board to accept it as presented and to note it. Um, additionally, our bond application does require that we have one of those guys current. Um, and I believe we have to upload it, but we also will be uploading the audit, the most current audit that you just accepted as well. And that that's going to have the weight. Mm -hmm. oh, so this is, doesn't get filed with anyone at the state? No, it just goes in the filing cabinet. Okay. So, I, I, so I'll just make one note where it says... Um, if, it asks if any of us went for trainings. I did go to one kind of very simple VLCT training on financial you, management. You can change that check mark. I didn't know that. And you certainly can change that check mark and put your initials on it. Okay. Okay. Anybody have any questions for Sandra about this? I guess not. No. Thanks, Sandra. So You're we welcome. need to um, authorize one of us to sign this, right? Yeah. Okay. So I'll take a motion. I'll uh, move to authorize uh, Anne to sign the controls checklist Do we have a as presented by Sandra or prepared by Sandra. Second. Uh, friendly amendment, except that I'm going to change the one check. Right. Um, since one of us did attend a financial training. Barbara, is that clear? Okay. And we have a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. And it's signed. I'll just comment that uh, I think the purpose of this is just to get the board to think about this at least once a year and you know, all the different factors and um, there is a line on here about financial policies and so that prompted me to go do some homework and read up on the town's financial policies which are on the website and there's some important information there I would say for you to at some point when you have, when you have a little bit of time there's a credit card policy there's a uh, financial and banking banking it's there, you know there's some, some important controls there Court Center. I also, uh, we, there are a few financial policies that need likely to be updated and also to be added. And I think the uh, audit report talks about that a little bit. So there's some work to be done, but it, there's, it, you know, we're not in any trouble in that way. All right, thank you. 
Given that we're half an hour ahead of schedule, would you like to jump right into budget markup? This is a question for the board, or do you want to skip over and take care of some of these other little things, get them out of the way? Anybody have a strong opinion? Or even a weak opinion? Um, I, I only, I guess, in, unless we're expecting anybody to show up for those, but if we're not, then I... Right, I, I was just thinking it might, it might be worth skipping over just in case there are people planning to join at seven for the budget, but yeah, okay. I know Jared. Probably I, not. But. Jared is not going to show up, so we can certainly take care uh, of that one if mm -hmm. that's all right. So next up is commission appointments. Um, Jared has applied for two positions: historic preservation commission, and I got a an over-the-top enthusiastic uh, endorsement from mm -hmm. David Sheets saying, "Please, yes, please, we need him." Um, so let's start with that one. Would somebody like to, would you want to talk about it? Would you like to move appointing Jared? And if I could just state that um, Jared and his family are new to Calus and they came, they attended your, our first weekend of Fall Foliage Festival when we had a meet and greet with the select board. And you might remember the family that sat around the table right here where I'm sitting. That's who Jared is. Yeah, we know. We had a chance we've to meet we've him. all met him. Oh, that's right. You he had a hero. Mm -hmm. That's right. I'm sorry. He applied to be on the select board. Yeah. Except you would not have met him, Donnie. No, nope, so. he just said good luck on the way out. <laughs> <laughs> no. We beat him up pretty hard. <laughs> I felt As you can see, we're giving him a lot more assignments. <laughs> Um, would somebody like to move Jared for a Historic Preservation Commission then? I would move that we appoint Jared Weiss to join the Historic Preservation Commission. We have a second. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Now the Planning Commission is a, a little bit more complicated. At the moment they just have five seats and they don't have an open position. However, we can just create one more position on this planning commission and appoint Jared to it. Or we can just let him go to meetings until um, March and then um, you know, appoint him to a vacant seat, of which there will be at least one because the chair has announced her intention to resign. I'm inclined to go ahead and create the seat. We can always take it away later. Has the have you had conversations with anyone on the yes the planning commission <laughs> right, yeah, okay. so in favor of creating exactly another that. position they don't care which okay. way we do it okay it, they're fine uh, obviously they'd love to have more people right um, when I was on the planning commission Scott we had seven didn't we when yeah. we were on the planning commission together they were all we were all busy and we were all busy yeah, yeah. I mean <laughs> creating a new position maybe. Good then, and maybe it stays. And sometimes, if there's a vacancy on a commission, you get interest from people who otherwise wouldn't think to express interest if it's full. Agreed. Agreed. Okay. So, so we could bring it up to seven so. then for now, because that that'll bring a quorum to four, whether you do six right. or seven. Yeah, and I think another thing to note, having you know, had a couple of conversations with the planning commission, it, the Town, updating the town plan is the, the next big priority for them, and um, and I think that's really important work. It's going to be a lot of work, um, and I think the commission would probably benefit from having just more people participating in that conversation who have kind of a, a formal say in, in what goes into the plan or what work can be done on it, and, uh, and I, I think that'd be great. Um, so yeah, I, I think that that also is a good rationale for you know, creating it and getting Jared in there so he can participate in those conversations as they're getting involved and you know before March. Other thoughts? Can we have a motion to increase the number of seats on the planning commission to seven and appointing Jared Weiss to one of them? Uh, so moved. Do we have a second? A second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Congratulations, Jared. Double <laughs> 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 I don't know what he's thinking. That's what you get for not coming to the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> um, Barbara, is that something you'll take care of informing him tomorrow? Okay, thank you. All right, do you want to move on to getting some of these reports? 
we could hear from Tegan. Tegan, do you have a report for us this time? Tegan doesn't have a report. Okay. Kari has some things he'd like to say. Would you like to hear that now? It's great. Let's right. let's go for it. Sure. I just wanted to share that obviously today was a very busy day for the road crew. Um, <laughs> you <see Nadi. laughs> uh, Not just because it was uniquely wet, heavy snow. Um, that was certainly bad enough. Lots of down trees. I mean, lots of down trees on certain roads and, mm -hmm. and power lines as well. Um, but we were also um, a truck short, and um, yeah, it was just really hard. Um, <clears throat> and um, last Wednesday was also a challenging day with Route 14 being closed, and the detour just didn't work for everybody, including the big trucks. So I've got some follow-up I'd like to do with the state on that. Um, but so obviously it's been challenging. We have ongoing equipment problems. I'm just really surprised. What do you mean it didn't work for the big trucks? For large trucks going up and around, coming especially coming down. Oh, the really, and really large ones. They have to go behind the store, right? They have to make that sharp turn. Mm -hmm. It's not an appropriate detour, I don't think, for some way. Okay. And the, and, and the state's way of notifying a, a truck driver is completely inadequate. So something has to, it should be done, right? Anyway, that's a, that's a, a, another task. I wish you luck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Conversations around yeah. it's the whole liability thing, but it it just it baffles me that you know you could have yeah fifty semis lined up at Peck Hill with nowhere to go and <laughs> reverse. <laughs> I mean, like, it's kind of shocking, but. Um... So Kari, just for your information, we've had a couple of studies done over the years as to what to do with that intersection, including one where we hired a professional. And I have a copy of it at my house, which I'd be happy to share with you. In okay. fact, maybe we should have it in the files somewhere. And they offer, this person offered, the, the firm that did it offered, I think, three options, all of them increasingly expensive, like really expensive at the time, so we never did it. Now they're going to be even we more expensive. A, that's in the files at the town office. I it, can give it to Kari tomorrow. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. Then I get to keep my copy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'd say that'd be a pretty good conversation. I, I guess the r r rumor is that there's going to be a significant amount of work that's being done on 14. So there's the culverts that are being uh, replaced now and the bridge work that was replaced last year. It's like that's all in preparation for a pretty significant resurfacing. And I know 14 is used pretty heavily by mm -hmm. semi trucks, granite trucks, yeah. the garbage yeah. trucks, so all of it. There's a lot of north south traffic that goes up there, and it would be nice to know that the state has a pretty adequate detour planned, you know, yeah. in advance. Yeah. yeah, or at least be able to work with other towns that do have the arteries that could take them further up. Part, part of the issue, just not to go too deep in the weeds, is that anything less than 72 hours of, of closure, yeah. they don't want to take any responsibility for the detour. Right. Yeah, it well, they're not required. And, 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 you know, Callis has a limited ability to detour people in appropriate ways, you know. Just, you know what the situation is, so mm -hmm. it seems like a bigger, bigger issue. Um, so <laughs> ongoing equipment challenges. We have no leads on a new hire, so we're going to need to step up our efforts there. Um, yeah, and then in terms of my own training, in, um, I've done a little bit of payroll work. Um, I'm hoping to dig in with Sandra on um, accounts payable this weekend next and get get um, some um, experience with that. Uh, and then we are, so you know, planning to do our first test direct deposit this week, just one employee, and then and next week, if it goes well, convert over to a direct deposit. Okay. And um, I've also started contributing a little bit to the dam bond. We're going to talk about that in a second, that effort, and also got training in the FEMA portal. Tegan and I will, will help out with that uh, till we need to break, and uh, the passages are, are going to play a lead role, I think, in the, in the um, up uploading of documents, but we're there for support as well. And um, on this list is boom mower, but yes. I, I don't have any information. I, I'm hoping that Toby's going to join us, but he's probably going to be closer to 7 o'clock. Mm -hmm. so. But if I could put in just a quick plug, I know we were presented with the option of renting it for 28000 or purchasing one and then having it paid off within four years. Um, 
I just got to really put in the plug for just purchasing one outright and that it will be more cost effective and less expensive in the long term and they will be able to mow when they are able to mow and not restricted to what could be an entire month of rain. They could help Larry and the conservation committee with certain invasives on off-season mowing times. I just, for the cost and the limitation of being able to rent them at when we need them. I think I we, we don't know if it's available though. Yeah. I think, he, so we'll need to hear whether Toby's checked that out. I think he was supposed to check it out between yeah. meetings. He was going to do it today and report back. Oh, okay. <laughs> None of us has power, so that's when you wait too much. <laughs> so <laughs> don't, don't let us lose that. If I, if, yeah. uh, if I forget to ask him, please, somebody remind me. Okay. So that's it for me. Thanks, Kari. Okay, it's still 20 of, so uh, how about... Can I ask a question? Yeah. So um, do you want to make any kind of contingency plan for if Kari finds out tomorrow from Toby that, that, that it's available and you don't want to wait all the way to December 11th and then it's gone by then? Yeah, you that's a good kind of thing to keep plan? in our heads. <laughs> Let's find out if he's got yeah. it first and then we'll... Yeah. 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 But, but and not have to wait all the way to right. December. Yeah, I mean, okay. okay, good. That should good be part idea. of the discussion. Thanks, Barbara. Um, Jamie, you want to talk about Curtis Pond? Yeah. Um, unfortunately, don't have as much as I was hoping to have. Um, the engineers and the contractor that we've been working with continue to express very strong optimism that we're going to get to a place where the price tag is um, well under a million dollars is the closest figure I can get out of them. Um, we will be meeting with them next week to sit down that um, by the end of this week, uh, Du Bois and King will have um, the final sort of redesign on the new proposal. And we'll know some. Be we'll have calculated numbers like how much concrete it's going to take, how much steel it's going to take. Um, the the change in design basically changes it from a a um, structural dam, which is anchored to the bedrock with rock anchors, which was the most expensive part of the project, um, and changes it to a gravity dam, which basically just has a footing that has so much concrete and steel in it, it's really heavy and it can't tip over. Um, and the theory there is that will save several hundred thousand dollars uh, in the rock anchors and other work. The other big change is in the way it's being formed. Um, it'll be formed with, you know, those sort of big concrete building blocks. I don't know what they're called. Um, and so that will enable the contractor to do the concrete work themselves instead of subcontracting it out to a, a, a concrete company. So they don't just like um, pour a mold, it would be... Right, like so like it's not like... Like with rebuilding the banks and the roads with like block things as opposed to having to... Right, have so, it, it. so it's just an easier construction um, method, the concrete blocks used as forms can then be reused so we don't have to buy them. Um, and there's a number of other benefits. So we're all very optimistic that we're going to get this project under budget, but we'll have more on that to present at the next meeting. Um, but we're confident enough that we decided to go ahead and start the bond application because the final deadline for the bond bank application, I believe, is December 15th? 18th. 18th. Um, so maybe I'll let Kari or Sandra jump in on where we are with that. And there's like only two release dates, right? For that, when's the other one? It's right, spring. so the other one is spring or early summer, but it it's too late. It would be too late for next year's construction season. Mm -hmm. So if we don't get in this um, application deadline, then it would push the project back a year. Um, and that would cost a million dollars more. And exactly. Yeah. Right. Well, um, it's kind of a bummer that they didn't come up with a more economical design. 
Yeah, agreed. <laughs> Can I ask about this gravity dam? So you mean no matter how much pressure is on the dam? Well, it's so... Still, it's, is it just as safe as an anchored dam? Um, theoretically, yes. Dam safety is okay with it as long as it meets the same calculations of force uh -huh. of water. Um, okay. And so that's those are the calculations being done this week of exactly what how it has to be designed to be as strong as the rock anchors. Um, and then there's a few other money things, CPA, but do either of you want to say anything about the bond process or where we are, or are we good on that? Um, yeah, I think there's an action item on the agenda tonight about um, w oh, yeah. if we're going to you know, we're gonna borrow in this cycle, um, we need to plan for which term right. we're, we're seeking 10, 20, or 30 years. And um, uh, so that, that has been, no, that, that payment schedule is in the packet if you got a chance to look at each of those options with and without um, deferring principal payment the first year would be a way to help with cash flow and cost, cost more in the long run. So we wanted to make that available to you so you could consider that. Um, I think our thinking was that the 20 year was sort of the, the uh, good middle ground that we could live with and that is the uh, payment schedule that we've assumed in the budget, just so you know, we can we can totally change it, but that's what's that's what's included so in the draft budget. With or without deferment. So we pay. More. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Um, well, that would hit this year, I believe. Sam, do you want to weigh in on that? She's muted. You got to unmute her. Oh. I think she she just needs on. There we go. Um, and I, I think I know what your question was, but if you wouldn't mind, I couldn't hear all of it. Would you repeat that, please? We were discussing the um, 10, 20, 30 year options with or without deferring the first year. And Kari was saying that you're both thinking the 20 year makes sense, and I just asked, if you were thinking 20 year with deferring the first payment or without in the draft budget? Without. Without, okay. And the reason for that is we'd be paying $20,000 of additional interest um, that we would not otherwise be paying if we had our first principal payment in FY25. So um, there is some interest that will be due. It will hit in FY24. There's a partial payment in on May 1st. That is shortly after the distribution in February. And, and that is is in that we are in now interest pay payment of roughly let's just say ten thousand dollars in that neighborhood is in that then it's fy25 and what you see when you get to your budget you're going to see the fy so if you defer your principal payment Payment, you you would pay reduction of your principal payment, thereby increasing your loan uh, payment overall by that extra year of interest without a reduction of principal. Now that's a strategic decision that the board will make, but uh, Kari and I talked about that, and uh, we did select the option of no deferment uh, for the. To consider, and that is what is in sheet that you're going to be looking at tonight. 
Uh, uh, but I'm not seeing it in the uh, in the runout. It looks like it, you know the forms that you gave us. It looks like there's no payment on May first, 2024, and the first payment. No well, May first, 2024 mm -hmm. is in FY24. FY24 is the fiscal year we are in now. It ends June 30th, 2024. Oh, so that one so shows we, up zero here. I see. Okay. I don't, so. It shows up as zero on the forms that we When you doing. look at your long-term debt, I, I'm looking at, are you, I don't know what you are looking at, but I'm looking at a 20 year uh, CPA bond of 22,500 with 20 years at interest estimated at 4.4. 9 percent nineteen thousand two hundred eighty seven dollars um i don't i don't know what to you know what i'm talking about I, I, I think what ann's pointing out is that the fact that there are two payments per year one includes um interest and principal and one includes just inter interest and um, so that kind and may, may 1st oh, 24 oh, would be interest would be just interest right. yeah that's just a timing issue yes that's right that nineteen thousand dollars that uh, is in the FY twenty five budget cell is actually paid into chunks, one in um, in uh, November, and one again in May. So November twenty four and May twenty five are in the same fiscal year FY twenty five, and that's that nineteen thousand dollars. Thank you. So what are the pros and cons of doing the shorter versus the longer? Why wouldn't we do the 30 year, for example? There's a higher interest rate and you, you, you pay more interest over time. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's much more expensive overall it's much more expensive and if you look at your loan schedules you can see the cost of a 30-year loan and compare it with the cost of a 20-year loan i see uh, oh yeah dollars. yeah i see yeah. that yeah i would lean towards the shorter i think toward, toward, toward the 10-year well not or the 20 but you know, as someone who had like voted for the bond and thinking four hundred fifty thousand mm dollars, -hmm. it's actually six hundred and fifty. You know, once you add right. interest, everyone's kicking in at like literally an additional fifty percent, which is not something mm -hmm. that I fully process. And so I think I mean you don't want it to be too much of a burden over ten years, but I certainly wouldn't do thirty. What's the difference between ten and twenty? Um, it's it's a hundred well, it's three point eight nine percent versus four point four nine, and it's uh, one hundred and twenty thousand. Yeah, roughly. Um, and just just so everyone's clear, these are not the current or they they are the current rates. They're not the rates that we will um, pay necessarily. Okay. Those won't be determined until closing. That's like when you take a mortgage. Other questions? Yeah, Scott. Then, Sandra, do I remember right that there's no option to prepay with a bond bank loan? That is correct. Yeah, bummer. Yeah. You mean like uh, somebody gives us a bunch of money? <laughs> well, it, I mean, it always, it always seems to be money coming along. And uh, <laughs> for example, when the, when the school system purchased their built their building on the U32 campus. They really, uh, they went out of their way to get a loan that they were able to prepay. And somehow they paid the whole thing off much more quickly than they had anticipated. Mm -hmm. um, that was a, maybe that was a different economy than we're in now. And um, I'm, I know Sandra has done the best possible for us. So this is what we ought to be doing. But, um, and I understand that the bond bank um, 
needs needs to ensure its investors of a constant rate of return. Um, so that's the reason behind this, and that maybe that's why the the money is available. Well, and I think we, in working with the CPA and, and needing to create a mechanism for um, receiving those funds in and applying them to the project, we created a, a dedicated fund uh, or a dedicated account. Is that right, Sandra? For uh, for dam related expenses. With the with the bond proceeds. Mm -hmm. Not with the bond proceeds. It, um, and uh, to receive money raised from the CPA, we created a, a dedicated a account that was structured so that that was money that can only be used for for the dam project. Is that right? So it kind of sits on. You already have a uh, Curtis Pond Dam Reserve. And the motion I would suggest would be to accept the donations to be deposited in the Curtis Pond Dam Reserve Fund, which means that that money then can only be used for the Curtis Pond Dam project. And it and it, that motion should so state that. Um, but that fund is pooled with the other reserve funds and with the operating account currently. And you would see that it's uh, your due to do from report. When you get your uh, month end report, you see all of the reserve funds that we have pooled uh, along with the operating account for safety and to get the best interest ha uh, that we can at this point in time but yeah they would be segregated by virtue of depositing them into the reserve fund by motion and they could only be used for that purpose so i i guess where i was kind of heading with that relative to scott's comments is that with that fund we we then have kind of a mechanism for continuing to raise funds you know in in into the future go after grants and then make sure that that money is appropriated and applied to that reserve fund and and thus reducing the the burden to the taxpayer um if, if we continue to pursue those opportunities so i guess that would also come with a charge to the cpa <laughs> to continue to look for those opportunities for for grants like the one that we're going to be considering um another way to skin that cat that and tuman was worried about the, yeah the, exactly the, the total cost of the taxpayers might be less than the right. 650 that you were worried about well no I mean, that would be great but we do also have the ongoing and we're committed yeah, yeah. Uh, insurance and maintenance and, yeah. you know, those things I don't understand the costs of yet. So, and I don't know if that'll be fleshed out more when we get the redesign done. Yeah. Okay. Um, any further questions on this at the moment? Would somebody like to make a motion? I Rose. Hi, welcome. Hi, Rose. So nice Hello, to Rose. see you. <laughs> Could you tell me what item you're under? Oh, we've jumped because oh. we were so far ahead. We're over in the reports section and we're on the Curtis oh. Pond Dam already. Okay, so we're now under okay. possible action, authorize the town treasurer to proceed with a bond application. Okay. Okay. Just want to be ready for a motion. So this is, we will be getting the bond or we are Preparing with the expectation of well, the if you want to so move, yes. <laughs> I don't know if I'm comfortable moving that. <laughs> well, why don't we let Jamie formulate the motion? Um, I it's kind of down there. Um, make a motion that we authorize the town treasurer to proceed with a bond application. Um, for the $450,000 bond approved by the voters, um, and that it be a 20-year um, 
term with no first year deferment. It's been moved. Do, uh, did you get all that, Rose? Term of 20 years, and what was the last part? Uh, with no deferment. For first, first, year. first year deferment. With no. Thank you. Okay. Everybody understand the motion? Is there a second? Uh, second. Okay. We are, are we ready? All in favor? Aye. Aye. You're not sure, Ann? I did. So we're, we're getting it. We're so one clarification and, and the Sandra so like to, I think Sandra is going to say, up and then we can't do things I, think and San, then I think Sandra wants to say what I was going to say. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what, what I was going to say is um, going back to what James said, uh, if we, if, if the bond is not applied for at this round, the next mm -hmm. round is in May, and the money will May. come too late to finish the project um, this summer, and it would be deferred for a year. So you, if you decide to pursue the bond application, you can, st it, the distribution won't be until February. You do not have to accept that distribution should something change your minds and you the feel that you cannot go the project. <laughs> so there's still just, you know, because the day I've spent, how long y'all been working on 30, 40, 50 years, you know, like this idea that it's just going to be magical and la da 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 da. So there is, right. God forbid we need it and out. Right. So if February came along and we weren't able to get a contract with somebody who could do it within our budget we could or any other sort of or any other thousand exactly. various people involved okay yep found the spotted salmon or something okay right i can live with that pay we'll say okay <laughs> how about you donnie you comfortable now yeah that was a little more clarifying yeah mm -hmm. okay yeah so is that an I? That is an I. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I said yay, not I. I. That, that's right. Yay does the job, too. So, uh, Rose, that's unanimous. Five. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, thanks. It's now 7 o'clock. Shall we come back to... Well, we could do this last one very quickly. Would somebody <laughs> like to move to accept some money to be deposited into the Curtis Pond Dam Reserve Fund? Do people want a one-sentence... Sure, go story. ahead. Sure. Uh, this is a uh, large chunk of the 270-ish thousand dollars the CPA has raised for the project. Um, and as the town takes more of a lead in the project and taking on the bills and the realization that uh, for the town to sign a contract with a contractor, when it comes to that, we want to have the funds in town possession instead of some in the community center possession, some in the CPA possession, some in the town possession. This is the first uh, probably of a couple waves of, of sort of trash cash transfer from the CPA to the dam, uh, to the town, s raised by the CPA for the dam project. Okay. With the intent that they're going to be transferring all of it to the town? Yes. Yeah, there, all along there's been some bills that the town has paid and some bills that the CPA has paid. Um, so some of the raised funds have been spent on the pieces that we've done. Um, and more will be raised and ultimately everything raised will be transferred to the town. Okay, clear? All right. Would somebody like to move to accept $40,000 from the CPA and $140,000 from the Maple Corner Community Center to be deposited into the Curtis Pond Dam Fund? So moved. Second? I'll second. Okay. All in favor? <laughs> Please say aye. 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 Thank you. Rose, did you get that whole thing? Yeah, just put Jordan's name in front of it. 
right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Just put, be sure to put that it's to be deposited into the Curtis Pond Dam Fund and not, as I put it there, in the right. agenda. And, can, can, um, I, I kept hearing Sandra say the Curtis Pond Dam Reserve, Reserve Fund. Fund. Oh, yes, thank you. Curtis Reserve Fund. Fund. Yeah. Curtis Pond Dam Reserve Fund. Okay. Thank you. Do, huh. we, do we need to clarify that that means it can only be spent on the dam, or is that inherent in it I being in that? I think it's room? inherent it's in the title of the place. That said, said okay. money's deposited into the Curtis Pond Reserve can Fund can be. be used only for that purpose. Yeah. Okay. I think it was part of our <laughs> memorandum of understanding. <laughs> yeah. It was, it was a formal condition that we accepted. Right. Um, yeah. So there's there's previous record of that That's great right. commitment. Okay, shall we go back now to budget markup? It's back to the seven o'clock item. Okay. And um, because I've never done this before, I, I asked Kari to please lead this discussion because he's done it 19 times. Well, <laughs> versions of it. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, um, so my understanding is that you've seen many of the components of this budget um, as the different commissions and the fire departments and uh, Toby was here with the highway budget last time. So you've seen some, many of the pieces, but this is the, sort of the first look at um, all of it together in a comprehensive uh, way. And we're going to review it and, and see what we can do. Um, I, I also understand that you're hoping to complete this budgeting process in by the end of December, if possible. And because of the holiday, you only have one scheduled meeting on the 11th. Uh, so just heads up that there may be an extra meeting in your future. <laughs> um, and so, and then in my memo, um, I tried to give you some framing, you know, sort of an overview of where we're at. If, you know, the bottom line is that the, this initial draft is, it calls for a 13% increase over the current budget. Uh, and so that's obviously quite a bit higher than the rate of inflation, and it's um, higher than the increases that have been approved, proposed and approved in recent years. Um, so so we've got some challenges, um, but keep in mind that um, it, so far, for the most part, people have been bringing you what they would really like, and no one has really gone through and pared things down yet. With the exception, I wanted to mention that we talked about quite a list of items last time when Toby was here about the highway. So uh, just to update you, Toby, Sandra, and I did sit down that week and talk about those items, I think all of them, and, and, and so there have been some adjustments to Toby's order. That's reflected in this document? That yes, was, so that's, okay. those are incorporated. Um, so the memo also summarizes um, key drivers and you know where the increases seem to be coming from and, and we can certainly dig into that but um, just talk about the process that we're going to use first so my suggestion was that we that you all consider a target um, and it doesn't have to be set in, in stone it can be a range but I think it's helpful it's an opportunity to think now before you get into the nitty-gritty and, and the hard decisions um, to say, what are we shooting for? Um, and then you can always revise that when you go back, but in my experience, it's helpful to know what you're, you're, you're aiming for. Um, so, um, and, then, and then, you know, if you did that, you were able to arrive at something, then we could dig in and go through line by line. But that's just my suggestion. How does that, how does that sound to you? Does anybody have, want to speak to that process? So you're saying as opposed to an increase of 13%, you want to see an increase of only 8% or something, or try to, yeah. is that what yeah. you're so you, you, Yeah, if, if, you know, you could base that on what, what's reasonable. You know, oftentimes you look at inflation and, and, you know, what's, because you'd expect the budget to go up by inflation, give or take yes. a bit. Or you might think about what you know what is what is reasonable to ask the taxpayers to to take on. Um, no, you know, what's, what, what can pass? <laughs> you know, it's very painful to, for a budget to, to yeah. not be passed. So we, we want to avoid that, obviously. But, you know, what's okay. what's feasible? But but that, that's just my suggestion. You, you can skip that step if you prefer. It might help us to i don't know think of a window i mean for me priorities are 
our paid staff, uh, benefits, things that are somewhat fixed, things that we have to have for road maintenance and those sorts of things. Um, I think it would behoove us to some of the other ones that perhaps people, businesses might want to pick up and sponsor or some of the more affluent folks in town might want to support certain commissions or groups or projects. Um, so are you saying it would be good to have a target? I mean, I think to, having to, a target would give us at least something that it, it'd be very rudimentary, but I, I think it would enable us to be kind of thinking, I mean, 13%, 15 that's like so much. And there's so many people in town, people that are so actively involved in our community and have been actively involved both locally and on a state level and they're feeling like they're not going to make it. So I don't want us to be contributing to that. And I know it's going to go up because of insurance, of course, but um, whatever we can do to find, yeah, places where you can kind of scale back would be great. Yeah, I think that one comment that I throw out there is that we over the last, I guess, looking at the last two budgets, we've been dealing with a, a, a situation where I, I think the true costs of the town uh, have been like pretty significantly um, underfunded, and then we're yeah. running over budget pretty, mm -hmm. you know, like every year. And I don't think um, that personally is. Uh, fiscally responsible um it just kind of hides the costs mm -hmm. and then people get outraged when all of a sudden you're you've blown through some budget because you didn't necessarily represent what what the costs are going to be mm -hmm. um uh and and I, I don't have anything in particular to to target the, so i think you know what this board has gone through and it's as exercises and conversations thus far is that has at least articulated a desire to start right sizing the budget relative to what the town needs to be planning to pay for um, not just next year what we think is going to be paid for next year but what the town needs to be paying for you know over the next five years um, and I, I don't disagree you know we have we have an obligation to everybody, uh, including ourselves, to try to keep our our tax rates uh, affordable. Um, and, and I think it is worth, if we are going to be trying to make those corrective steps, um, and that is driving up the budget. I, I think, you know, maybe this is a, a time where we deliberately say we're going to reduce this budget to soften the blow um, while we try to right size some of these other things that are going to be long term carrying costs um, and then try to find a way to add it back in there in years that haven't been so expensive. Um, well, no, exactly. And, and I think that a lot of the, and granted, comparatively to salaries and benefits, you know, they might seem small but cumulatively add up. Um, and I think there's a lot of alternative ways to seek funding for some of these things. So, and I know it's kind of because you're you're correct that it it that they presented a budget that certainly no one could stay within. You know that we have no choice but to go over. I mean, legal fees alone. So, it needs to be an honest budget. Well, in the know, sense that we have, you know, the, these are the realistic costs of things. But. So I guess I would, uh, I would argue, uh, I, I don't necessarily disagree, uh, except I, I think, from my perspective, we we have an obligation to pay for the things that we need to run the town, and mm -hmm. that is the human beings to do the work, and they need to have a living salary to do that stuff, yes. and they need to have benefits that. Are attractive to keep them engaged and motivated to continue to do the work of the town. So and I think the town would be behind that primarily. I, I don't disagree, but I think that uh, I, I think that that is going to have force harder conversations around other ex funding other extracurriculars. Yeah. Uh, Which is and, what I was driving at. You know, uh, commission uh, related 
costs or initiatives, um, and and that's just I guess the way. Yeah. It, it, okay. That that conversation could unfold. So I, yeah, I think we're on the same page. I think we are. And I think that's important to communicate in this forum. So. And if I'm reading this, you know, the vast majority of the increase is investing in our people. Of the two hundred and sixty-two thousand dollar increase represented here, two hundred and three thousand of it mm -hmm. is wages and benefits. So it, I think we're that's the direction we're going. So do you want to have a discussion about a target? I have a question. Mm -hmm. uh, on the first budget piece I saw, it, it was what, every 5% is another oh, $25. Every 1% is 20000 That okay. was Kari's memo here. All right. There. Just rough numbers. Yeah, yeah, just curious. Roughly. Yeah. Um, so every twenty thousand dollars that we find and pull out, or we we bring that thirteen back down a little bit closer to the four. Um, so, Kari, do you know what CPI is right now? Um, I, I think it's running between two and three percent. Per that's all items in New England. I have so, so if we were to choose that as a target, it would be about two point five. Yeah, I mean, let's just be generous and say it was, it was three percent. Okay. Two hundred thousand dollars. Okay. I, I think um, I like Jordan's comments. They're thinking ahead to what's the case we're we're going to make because there's going to be a story with this budget. Even if we were to get it cut it in half, the increase in half, it'd still be a sizable increase. And so, how do you explain that to people? Um, I, I like the the story of well, we're being honest about about right. what's needed to run the town in 2024. Mm -hmm. So, um, and, 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 you know, that might be an argument for not setting a target and just going through line by line and saying, what's the responsible right. thing to do here and seeing where we end up. That, that's fine too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, frankly, I think that's, uh, that's the only, way to really kind of go through through there we do we know what the driving factors are already so it, it's somewhat it's somewhat arbitrary to throw out a number and say we're going to try to we're going to try to end up at four percent knowing that we could we could gut everything and we're still not going to likely get there um right. and, and so um I, I think we need to have kind of a an honest conversation i guess about the, the salaries and wages and the positions that we're that we're committed to filling um, and the ones that we've already filled and and probably move move beyond that and then start moving through some of the other bigger increases and, and see where we we might be able to kind of roll those back um, sure. or or defer them um, if if we can defer them um, if that makes sense it it'd probably be worth mm -hmm. going there. Um, so if that sounds like an approach, I, I can put the budget up on the screen that folks at home will be able to see it. Um, not sure I'm able to see it that well, but let's see what we can do. Yes. Should be the same. Okay. Um, and Jordan was sort of suggesting an, an approach of why don't we start with, I think, uh, looking at wages and benefits, since that's the thing that's driving this budget, and, and then just go from there. Um, does that make sense? Yeah. So. <clears throat> I'm going to minimize this so I can see more. Carly, will you look at your glasses? They're right behind. They're still behind. <laughs> Thank you. It's a curse. I, I can't see far away you know, without them, but I can't see close with them. So I'm going to focus up here so I use my glasses. Thank you. Um, so we'll just go to the top and 
Um, the, just so you know, the, the color coding here, this, this um, orangey color, is, is wages and stipends, and it's a note that any changes there flow through to the um, uh, Social Security and, and Medicare. They have an impact elsewhere in the budget, and sometimes retirement as well. Depending on so uh, this first section is about select board. There are some you know stipends, obviously, um, according to secretary of wages, but nothing significant in terms of wages. So the, the big first big category would be town clerk, and in that we have the town clerk's wages, which we point out does not currently include a cost of living adjustment, and then there's an assistant assistant town clerk wage. Um, and the note here that uh, town clerk has for 10% increase, and that's budgeted at 25 hours per week. Uh, and that's where the 34,827 comes from. So there's that. Let me also touch on the other office staff because I think these kind of go together to a certain extent. Also in here we've got the town administrator wages that was budgeted at 80,000. Just to remind you, if you haven't seen that, it was pulled from the current year's budget. Um, the director of public works was an 80,000 item that's been shifted over to the general government budget and is considered a town administrator. And then we've got um, a town administrator assistant at 20 hours per week at 25. I'm not really certain on the history of, the, of this. this None, none of this, this is all coming from requests that were before I, I looked at it. I, Sandra could speak more to the history of where these numbers came from, but this is really just a first draft. Um, and then we've also got the town treasurer wages at $30 um, an hour for 32 weeks an hour. Yeah, assistant town treasurer wages, only just $200 a year. And uh, finally, the delinquent tax collector at eleven thousand. So that that collection of um, positions you might call town office staff. Um, Tegan, Barbara, and I had an initial conversation about, and um, Sam Sanders also weighed in. What I'd like to do is find a way to reduce, you know, it, it, it occurs to me that we need to develop the, the staffing model for next year now. I thought I'd have a luxury of more time to figure out what's that going to look like um, post Sandra, you know, when I'm, you know, fully enmeshed in the, in the job and then we're thinking about, you know, what do we need for a treasurer or what do we need for assistance and, and that like. I don't think I, think, I think we need to figure that out now. And what I'd like to do is re reduce the overall amount of money somewhat. I think that there's some opportunity to do that in there, especially in that assistant town administrator position. Um, but I'd also like to make sure that everyone's getting at least, at least a cost of living increase. I think that we, we don't want to not do that. So, so um, I, what I'd like to do in that in, in there is sort of set an initial goal of can we reduce it by at least twenty thousand dollars, pull one percent down, and get everybody at least a cost of living increase. That was sort of the initial parameter that I put out there, and um, I'd like to hear what you think about that. Is, is does that seem reasonable to you? Um, and then have us work on that more and bring it back to you by the eleventh of the proposal for that. How does that sound? So that'd be for treasurer, town clerk, and you. Yeah. Plus the three assistant positions. Plus those assistant positions and the delinquent tax collector. And the delinquent. Oh, so the eleven thousand's in there too. Yeah. And keep in mind, all of these have significant implications on the benefit side. Any any of them that are especially full time. Are, can you quantify that in any way? The, the by, benefits by the amount you yeah can you say if we reduce it by what you were going to try to reduce it by twenty thousand does that include the benefits no that's just on the wages so side. I, I are you that. able to say if we reduce it by twenty thousand the benefits will reduce by this I don't, I don't think the benefits will they don't track decrease that significantly medical insurance is the big one mm -hmm. and we'd still be looking I think at the same number of full time employees and so mm -hmm. the implications for benefits are probably the same but. We are rolling out a change to the uh, to the 
buyout policy. Is that or that's what one that we're discussing so that we could theoretically project uh, kind of a reduction in, in benefits if we had kind of a good idea of how many people are going to be taking that buyout? Potentially, sure. right? Sure, right. So that, that could work for us. There's no assumption of a buyout in the current, because we don't have that policy yet. It's just right. a discussion. Mm -hmm. But that is something that we'll want to factor in to, to the extent we can. And that's, we figured 40%, you say 40%? Which would be um, parity with what the, what the road, road, road con contract, contract is, is. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Andy, did you have a question? Um, so, as you're talking about maneuvering these things before the next budget, which would make sense, um, one, I know you had talked some about taking on some of the treasurer duties and possibly getting like a bookkeeper, and if yes. that were the case, would we still need in a the assistant person would help during tax time. Primarily, I just feel like Barbara wears like 20 hats. Can we give her like one title? One all encompassing, like you're all the assistants mostly, right? I'm not sure. Okay, no, I feel like, like we have multiple assistant jobs and you are that assistant. Well, at the moment, I think I'm just the assistant town clerk and the assistant treasurer. Okay. Because I don't think the select board ad, ad, ad administrator is going to continue, and so that most of that job has gone to Kari. So. Okay. But, well, but but also going to Kari is the opportunity to hire a town administrator assistant. And so we don't know how we don't know how the, right. what that's going to look like yet. And that first draft has 20 hours in. in um, so that's what I'm saying. I think we need a little more time to think that through, but I think there is an opportunity to reduce the number of hours that are allocated in here. Okay. And then and bring down the budget some. Okay. And then I feel like I saw something. So this new budget, Toby would no longer be, because you will have absorbed him by then. So that's another question. It comes under highway department, but there is a there is 10 hours a week of grant administrator in here. So we're, we'll get to that in just a minute. Okay. But, but that was another thing that was incorporated in here. And I, I wonder, I guess, if, if it makes sense, as to, I think you're exactly right, you know, that would, that the assistant positions were kind of put in there um, with, with the assumption that we wanted to try to put some money against uh, presumed responsibilities, just to provide, you know, a, a way of kind of channeling funds there in, in the budget. But I think there's now, uh, I think, a, a little bit of slack in, in that so that we could consolidate a lot now that we've been spending a lot of time thinking about the structure of uh, office staff and roles and responsibilities. I, yeah, I think it, the town would probably benefit from uh, leaving like a, a consultation budget of some, with some sort of prof prof professional service budget. Um, because I think we get sometimes wrapped up in, in distracted by the names of things uh, like assistant treasurer or mm -hmm. um, or you know administrative assistant or, or, or something like that you know what we're struggling with is like what are the things that need to be done and how are we going to get and how are we going to get them done and and if you need to pay somebody to do you know pretty high level stuff because we have a particular gap uh, in the staff and we should afford ourselves the ability to do that and it's, maybe that is maybe that's just bookkeeping maybe it's maybe it's higher level you know uh, financial consultation um, relative or, or training or something like that but um, and, and that's where I think it kind of goes back to the grant administrator you know if, if we don't want to fully release those funds um, but, but try to step away from that formal position and let's just make sure that we have a placeholder that's just professional assistant that somebody wants to step up and fulfill a role throughout the year for a, a, an acute need, at least we have it there. Sure. If that makes sense. Yeah. 
So that sounds like a yes. Sorry, please. All right. Go back well, so that's that. that's what we're going to do. We're going to work on this the office staffing model over the next two weeks. We'll bring you a proposal. It hopefully, we'll bring down the overall um, dollar amount, but also make sure that everyone's getting at least a cost of living increase budgeted. Mm -hmm. And when you do address the uh, the the opt out medical insurance provision, right. if that's what we end up doing. Um, so, so that's on the office side, and then on the highway department side, that's a separate part of the budget. Down to that. So we've got um, we've got budgeted four full time road crew positions, and that includes a you know a three percent increase. And it's not not negotiable. It's a set it's set in the contract. Um, pulled out the road commissioner. We we're not budgeting for a significant amount of temporary help. Um, we don't think that we'll need that. That's covered. Um, but we are adding a fifth position in here in the budget um, for a road foreman at a slightly higher rate. Um, it's going to have to probably be pragmatically if you're going to fill it. It's Probably more than, than they're that. all making at least 30, so yeah, I think we'll be hard pressed to find someone for under that because basically it's an Elfie without the title, right? I can't, uh, I can't disagree with that. I mean, it's, it's just not that he's an entity, he's a person, but it's basically doing what he did, right? Because you would be assuming grant work, that is my understanding. Yeah, I would not be the foreman, that's for sure. Well, no, you'd be like doing the technical, right the grand things, and that sort yes. of parts of it. Yes. yes. And then the foreman would be doing that day to day management mm -hmm. and road assessing and yeah. ordering. Directing the, the work of the day. The dirty sand and the whatnot. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And the buck would stop in regards to supervision with you. Right. Right. Uh, hiring, firing. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, formal evaluation, mm -hmm. uh, that, sort of, that sort of thing. Because the the foreman in this model is is a you know part of the bargaining unit. Mm -hmm. um, and, we don't have an, okay. and we don't have an option if they're working for them and they have to be part of the union. Yeah. Yeah, if they're performing if they're performing the duties of uh, of the road crew, like if they're performing the work, then they, they need to be part of the bargaining they would be unit. Happy yeah. Into the union and only if they were not doing the day to day and purely. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Like what you're doing. Okay. Exactly. Got it. Yeah. Just what I thought. Managerially, I think it hasn't been super clearly defined. I think that's a, that's okay. We we do we have the accommodation for uh, for a road foreman type individual to be part of personnel management, I guess I'd say, um, you know, setting hours, managing overtime, scheduling, and that sort of thing. But yeah, the buck essentially stops with, with the town administrator. So it strikes me in looking at this that we've had over the last few years different models, right? There's been a, there's been, uh, we've relied on uh, temporary help. We've had a, a director of public works We've had an operations manager at different at different points. Um, in this budget is is a new position called the road foreman. I mean, we might have had that in spirit, but not not as a line item in the budget. And so, just so everyone knows, that's that's a significant increase to the budget. It's sixty four sixty five thousand dollars plus the benefits that go with that. And I think that's this is an example of Jordan's point. If we feel like this is what's needed to operate the highway department uh, responsibly, then th this is the, you know, the budgetary implication of that. And we'll just need to be prepared to speak to that. But the foreman is essentially acting as what we previously called the road commissioner that is now you doing the supervisory oversight portion of it. Uh, yeah. I, so I, you take it on like the operation manager role and the buck stops I, with you. I, I guess that's bit. right. I mean, two years ago, I guess there was the road commissioner instead of the foreman. So I guess yeah, that, so that worked. Yeah, so a change of, you know. And, and last year um, was a combination of a part-time road commissioner and some temporary help. Maybe that was how it worked. Last year they winged it, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, just in terms of what the budget. What the budget allowed. Yeah. <laughs> Practice, they were winging it. 
But yeah, well, yeah, exactly. If, but if, if we're committed to the, I guess the upshot is if we're committed to five full-time positions on the road crew, we don't have a lot of flexibility by contract. I mean, this is sort of what it mm -hmm. is. The wages are set, the benefits are set. So does this include the part-time, the two part-time people? Yeah, it's essentially, if it, if it were, if we stuck with the model we have now, it's two part-timers instead of a full-time, and you know, you save on benefits, right. theoretically. Okay. But, but it kind of washes out. So, so the, I mean, those are the, I mean, that's the lion's share of the increases, those, what is it, nine or ten positions. Would you envision that we'd pay less for part-timers if we had another full-time person? No, you think we'd still need... I don't think you'd get enough part-time help. Well, I think both Ed and Dana would don't require getting 20 hours a week. They're, they're capped at 23, actually. That's the most they can do. And that's pension per year? Like, per week, per year? Mm -hmm. Yeah, per week. Per week. Yeah. Right. But I get the impression that if you know if they don't get anything for a couple of weeks, that's okay with them. Uh -huh. I mean, maybe I Anne, you know this better than I do. Well, no, I don't think that. I think they work in retirement because they enjoy working. Exactly. Um, I think they count on it, but at the same, you know, Ed especially is, you know thinking more about spending time with family and things, but he's yeah. always ready to work the 20 hours a week, certainly. We've been leaning um, heavily on them because of the situation, but I don't yeah. think they expect to be, or need to be leaned on that much in the future. So well, we no, could and save we, some there. Yeah, you know, but I, I, and we probably want to have those conversations with them because they, you know, creatures of routine and yeah. they work their 20 and that's what's customary, you know, and they might be totally fine with that working as much but then they might also that's what they expect to do so i won't speak for them but something we could explore um the overtime hours the 656 is that just relative to historical time uh with with an increase or just a carryover? Um, I think we need Sandra's help with that, but I recall Toby saying that's a sort of an average of, you know, a, couple a of reasonable years. assumption based on past years. Uh, and is the 164 coming from uh, just the balance of whatever that average is, you know, assuming that that individual would be, you know, performing the same work? I, I think it's each each one of these positions there's an assumption of 164 hours of overtime right so in the yeah. for the four full-time positions it's 656 hours yeah right yeah. and that, I think that's just based on it's a guesstimate based on what's happened in the past well and I guess my so then my question is do we have an obligation to pay to schedule overtime for a road foreman equitably to the other oh. the other individuals, you know, if if they're absolutely that they, they are part of the crew, they're doing the work, they're responsible for the scheduling. But I would also expect that that individual is also beholden to keeping costs down and scheduling things such that or managing things such that our overtime hours are being held within a particular budget every year. And, and part of that is gonna be making sure that they're not putting in more overtime than, than, than needed. And is that something as you being the, the manager of the whole, Kit and Caputo would be regularly, would they be running overtime through you? Would, I mean, certainly, like in the winter, we've had this discussion about, yeah. you know, like in the getting up early in the morning. How do you, how do you, that, that? Yeah. you know, and 
do they all get, say, get that extra money or does one person get stuck with it and then if they go out they get the extra you know and yeah. trying to cut back those because this year we had no choice with overtime but there's probably yeah. times in the past where it could be yeah, a little tighter it could be a little bit more judicious yeah. i think you know in, in say i've been on the job probably two weeks with weather so far and it's worked both ways it's i've had a, i've got a call saying is it okay if that we go into overtime and I've also, like I was mentioning to Ann, Tyler put in a 14-hour day the other day um, because the truck broke. And he didn't, he didn't check with me. I don't know if he tried to tried to find me or but he just did it, and I'm glad he did because that, that was clearly the right decision. So some of that's going to have to be worked out over time, as of course our understanding. When do, when do you when do you need to clear it and when not? But well, I, I get the point. And I think that that gets to uh, that gets to a kind of another point. I, my hope over you know the next year or two is that we can start to define the role of foreman and uh, and 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 the roles that the administrator plays in, in working with the foreman and managing uh, those hours. Uh, that we that we start to develop some really transparent numbers about how many hours it actually takes us to do the core work that the road crew right. needs to do every year and um and that's going to inform what we pay guys to do uh so I, I'm, I'm not trying to single out tyler at all if the truck needs to get fixed it needs to get fixed and that that stuff happens mm -hmm. but but that stuff um you know, it sounds like that's probably going to happen in overtime, so that's not necessarily time that he would have spent doing anything else. But, you know, if we look at other responsibility, more seasonal work or something like that, you know, it, we may be needing to make decisions about it. That's not something that we're going to be paying our guys to do. They have other things that are of higher value for them to do, and, and we need to make a plan for hiring that work out if we need, if we need the work to be done. Right. Um, otherwise, you know, you get into a situation where it's just like, all right, well, I'm going to do this thing for a week and a half, and it's just like, okay, well, that's a week and a half that gets lost, and, and we're, right. and I've got a concern right now that basically we're, uh, we're anemic um, <laughs> in the amount of work that needs to be done, and uh, not necessarily the, the number of guys to do it, but like how, how we spend our time uh, getting stuff done. And I think a lot of that, if they have management, that can really, you know, look forward and plan and be wonderful over the winter if we can get someone in there who can really be planning out this summer so it doesn't just come mud season and power through mud season and then the summer comes and it's like, okay, so what are we going to do, you know, but right. other things like grading this summer, it rained all the time, you have to have like consecutive decent days mm. and we had crunch numbers on how long it would take to grade all the roads just one pass. Okay, and one grader. With one it grader. It take eight weeks with one grader. Yeah. yeah. So, um, you should, that with over got a spreadsheet going. Yeah. That's, uh, yeah. that's a fun oh. one. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> a lot of different things to think about, but. But it, it does that same thing, and, and, and I think, how much, how much time does it take to grade uh, all of the roads if you're I, like idyllically just uh, just doing it as much as we feel like it is appropriate? And it's sunny um, every day. And it's yeah, every and it's sunny day. every day, and that's going to be a number, and that and it's either realistic or not realistic, and um, and I don't necessarily think that it means you know just kind of throwing more guys at it. I, I think there's there's opportunity for other conversations about like well how are we maintaining this section of road that makes it a requirement that we're spending two weeks a year, you know, grading. Um, it's there's something else that we can be doing um, and budgeting for, you know, should we have a capital campaign for, re you know, replacing whole sections of road um, uh, so that every couple of years we're doing a certain amount of road repair. Um, well, relative to how much it I mean, costs. I mean, that's to something pay. that they would they would love to do because I know like that one section and it took a whole week of max gray, which was not, a huge section, but it held up beautifully in, um, during the flood. And Could it have been rebuilt recently? Yeah, so they had to re-ditch and they put in a much larger culvert and they had crowned it and, and like really laid down with the chlorine, made a very hard surface and when the floods came, that held up. So then everyone on Max was like, so when are you going to do that on my section? <laughs> yeah, that took like a week. A lot of materials too, so 
it, it would require some, yeah, planning. Donnie, do you have something to say? No. Oh, oh sorry. Do I just have Yeah. <laughs> How many of them were there to solve? Yeah. So, I mean, I, 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 um, I hear you. I think I do. Um, and that there actually is a specific point on um, in this budget slash plan regarding the um, um, grant work um, uh -huh. with the um, Kent the Kent Road. Um, was it called French thing. mattress? Is what it was called, mm -hmm. and that could be done by the road crew and save us money because it'll be reimbursed. But it, but what's the opportunity cost of that? And that's the sort of thing I, I hear you saying. Like we need to sort of get to a point in our planning where we can make intelligent decisions about the use of our limited resources, whether that's time or money. And well, also our think, equipment, because the French mattress is very hard on the equipment, and I know uh, the guys were very anxious to. The destroy trucks. their trucks because yeah. of the big, big rocks. Well, I think with five people, there's a lot of opportunity to get a lot done. Yeah. Um, especially seeing how five's really six right. with the two part-timers. Um, I mean, those are two of the better grader operators around here. Mm -hmm. um, and there's really no reason they shouldn't both be going every possible day they can. Mm -hmm. But I think there is something to be said about the, the, the risk reward versus what you're doing specifically as far as that. I mean, replacing roads, one thing, a French mattress. I mean, if it costs you $10,000 to replace broken bodies, uh, those bed chains are not very cheap. So, mm -hmm. you know, kind of picking w what projects are really good for them to do the most productive. Yeah, and and what we're using our equipment for. I mean, you know, yeah. you can hire out trucking. You know, we don't yeah. need our guys to be going and, and hauling material. Maybe we can use them for hauling more, more locally. But you know, that, that gets way, way down into the weeds. And frankly, uh, I think Donnie is like way better equipped to be having those conversations. <laughs> so, um, so I, I think we can kind of save save that for a little bit later. But yeah. as we are looking for a road foreman, I just wanted to kind of set the expectation of, of what. That. What kind of oversight I think we should be expecting, um, because it's going to get really expensive to yeah. to perform, self-perform, um, and it's going to well, change the calculus quite a bit. It, it, no, I, 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 I hear you, and um, I think the implication of that is that we ought to be budgeting for more than twenty-seven dollars an hour if that's the if that's the quality of the supervision we want. I don't think you're going to. We want anybody, frankly. Well, I don't. I don't think you're going to find somebody with a lot of, of background and knowledge in a, at twenty-seven dollars an hour. Yeah. Um, well, what would you say? You just. I, I would say at least start it at thirty. With that being said, there should be some qualifications that they've had some experience and not just necessarily worked on a road crew. Yeah. Some sort of. I mean, really, half their job is managing personalities. Right. I mean, at the end of the day. Uh, so what, I mean, that, uh, 27. So uh, are we in agreement about the five positions in the highway department? I think it's necessary. I mean, with the amount of roads that we have, you know, when uh, other towns are trying to coach our guys, they always make the point of saying how many fever miles they have. So, yeah. you know, for them to... I think I got all these. Have we had to be five? Effective. I guess when Alfie. So Alfie. Um, was that? Did we have five full-time equivalents then? No. Four. No, we didn't. So this is really basically adding twenty-two hundred. Right, mm -hmm. right, but adding twenty-two hundred hours a year to the pool. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's what we're seeing. Is, yeah. Is the, is yeah. A significant increase in the budget just from yeah. that. Point. Right. So, um, I mean. Can I, make, can I make a comment? Yeah, please. <laughs> um, so, last year's budget had the 80000 for the Director of Public Works mm -hmm. plus, plus four positions. So, essentially, 
by eliminating the 80,000 and replacing it with a foreman for 50 to 60,000, there's really no change in that salary line item other than the raise to the, uh, the four crew members to $25 an hour. Well, unless you sort of think of the town administrator position as the, what was in there as the public works director. Right. <clears throat> Yeah, so yeah, I mean, it's we're... basically taking the one position and making two. Well, then that would be it. Come up with the public works director. Alfie was still, I don't know what his title would have road been, road but he, road so he would have remained the road commissioner. Yeah. And that salary was still included, um, even with the director of public works. So it's kind of mm -hmm. absorbing that. Right. So, you know, I guess kind of circling back on like the hourly rate and the budgeting for the road form and you know, I think it's I think it's fair to take the input from from Donnie and relative to the conversation that we were just having about what our expectations for that individual is going to be, you know, if you make it $30 an hour, 40, et cetera, et cetera, do the math here, you're, you're coming out to 6240 uh, or 62400. Um, and if you wanted to try to make up the difference for that, I'd say that it'd be fair to say you would expect them to work less overtime than the rest of them. Um, and now you're netting around that same 62 to 64, call it 64 and cut their hours in half, mm -hmm. uh, their overtime hours in half. Well, and it, the foreman should work, in most instances, less overtime. You know, I certainly, that was, Something that are current, certainly this summer I didn't want to call out the same guys because it's a fair just because so and so lives down the street and it's the easiest one to call every time a tree's down or because then someone else isn't getting the overtime. So yeah, the overtime should be equitable and should be focused, I think, on the, the crew. And there's probably certain instances the foreman would have to, but I wouldn't want to see them taking all the we wouldn't hire such a person, but, you know, <laughs> it's, yeah. Um, so most of the overtime is, is winter plowing. Right. Mm -hmm. um, essentially, you've got to have five people, so that includes the road foreman out there plowing as well. Um, the rest of the year, it's really only emergency situations like trees and storms that uh, cause any, any need for overtime. Most of the summer work is all fixed in a nine hour day. And that includes the road crew themselves, correct? Not just, wouldn't be just the foreman, that's all of them. Yes, so they average like 164 hours a year of overtime. Okay. Right. And, and it, so again, every year is the overtime number is going to change depending on the storms and the, and the incidents of plowing and icy roads and all the other stuff. And it's totally unpredictable that 800 hours is sort of an average over the last four or five years. Um, uh, you could cut some of that if you want and hope for, uh, you know, a less severe winter, but that's going to change and you can't really predict it. Okay. That's right. Good on that one. So, the, so we've gone through the office positions of the highway department. What else do we want to look at? Do we want to look at the smaller items? You mean uh, we've done wages? Wait, yes. When you say smaller items, yeah, do you mean so, benefits so like insurance? insurance? We don't have any control over because we're constrained by the union agreements for the guys, right? And we yeah. need to provide the same for the Correct. The, staff. We, we're locked into a gold plan or equivalent. Mm -hmm. um, as with every budget that I work on, medical insurance is a big driver and it just it goes up faster than anything else. And it certainly is the case here. It's a monopoly. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you're seeing that uh, on the, the highway department and in the general government budget. Um, and, the, and then we've got retirement, we've got um, you know, other, other benefits, but there's not a lot of flexibility in those areas, at least not with the highway department. The contract. 
There is a line item in, in that section that's called benefits contingency, and it's fifteen thousand uh, dollars. I don't think we ever tapped it, and I don't know why it was created, but um, that's a number that you could probably throw out if you'd like to, because um, I don't know what it covers and whether it's important or not. We're, we are. We actually took it out of the draft, so we, it was in there last year, so we, we zeroed it out. Do we want to go back and start from the beginning and just work through? Just make sure you at least understand what the different items are? I'm wondering if while we've got Toby here, we should just have a quick conversation about, about the board mower. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So, Toby, were you able to find anything out about the boom mower? Is there one available? Um, yeah, it's still available. The price is still $130,000. Let's Sorry. <laughs> and when could we have it, Toby? Pardon me? When could we, if we were to, when can we pick it up if we were to buy it? Uh, well, my phone was out all day, so I have no idea, but I'm assuming we could get it as soon as we need to. If we commit to it, um, I'm not sure how long it would be before they want some payment for it and have it um, delivered to the town or okay. we would go pick it up. I mean, having said that, we don't need it till spring, of course. Right. I'm not sure. Well, again, if we buy it, I'm not sure how long they'll wait for us to pay for it. Right, right. And you're saying we could get it for 28000 now. Is that what you said? Well, when no, we so get at least a five-year plan? Right. So it would be a five-year five lease for $130,000. If you divide 130 <coughs> by five, it's 26000 and then there's going to be interest on top of that each year, so it's going to be somewhere between twenty-seven and twenty-eight thousand per year for five years. Wait, I'm sorry. It's six thousand plus interest. How did you get up to twenty-eight thousand? <coughs> no, twenty-six. Twenty-six thousand per year on the principal. Oh, twenty-six. And okay. Then <laughs> That's what I missed. Okay. okay. But with good maintenance, it could last us quite a long time, yes? Oh, certainly yes. I mean, that is, we have a crew that's excellent about maintenance. So if we were to approve that tonight, can we put, can, do we have to take the 28,000 out of our current budget? No, you could use that line item to make the capital payment if you wanted to. It doesn't, I mean, you would have to put it into the following year's capital plan for 28000 or whatever the annual payment's going to be. But you would eliminate that. If you can, you can just leave it there now. If you decide to um, purchase it, you can move it from mm -hmm. the operations plan and put it into the capital plan, but it would still have the same effect on the total budget. Right. We wouldn't be paying for it out of the fiscal year 24 budget. They could wait probably until we, well, we won't be starting that well, budget it's, until June. So it's about, it's about taking a lease and essentially, so if you took a lease in January of 24, you could put off paying your first payment for a year, which would make it January of 25, but that still is in fiscal, that would be in fiscal year 26. Okay. So you would save the twenty-eight thousand in this current budget for twenty-five, but it would have to show up in twenty-six. And again, it's about the timing of when you purchase it, and you and you decide to take the lease in arrears. No, I was concerned that it has to be in the budget we're operating under now. No, that, no, not at all. Okay. You guys want to talk about it some more? No. Toby? Yeah? Hi. If the first payment is in January 2025, January 2025 is in... <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, you're right. It is. Boy, do you think oh, me? Gosh, I couldn't guess that. So it would move it. So if you 
put the payment down in capital expenses and take it out of the operating budget, right. oh. it, it would not oh. be an exchange for this year. There we go. Right. Yeah. Good people hear that. We've got, we've got in this budget, we've got 28,000 allocated under um, the general budget, and we could move it into the capital budget. And we, we essentially have it, we, we have it covered in this budget. Okay. So, this is a used one that Dana used this summer that we rented. This, but this one he's talking about, the one that they're talking about, but mm -hmm. he, um, we rented it for the month and he really thought it did a great job. And I don't, how much do they run if they're full price, Toby? Seems like it's considerably. So it's like $200,000. Um, well, yeah. So, so the, the, the Massey Ferguson that we're, we would purchase used uh, was about 155 brand new. And the one that John Deere we looked at was 190 brand new. Do you know how many hours the machine has on that, Toby, the Massey? Uh, I don't, but I could find out. Okay. What do you guys want to do? Do you want to put this off? Do you want to make a decision tonight? I mean, you just wait. Is that Sam's like? <laughs> Yeah, it's me. I, I have a question. Toby, is the lower you're looking at for 130, is it new or used? It's used. It's used. So if the same rules apply to heavy equipment as apply to automobiles, you cannot lease uh, a used piece of equipment. I do not know if there are rules if that applies, but you have to look at that. And uh, uh, um, if you could not lease it you, to get that, to get a loan passed for five years. So that would be a good question when you're looking at that equipment. Can we lease it or does it have to be a loan? Um, <clears throat> what's your sense of whether if we take out a loan at the bank, would they give us a loan for the value of the tractor? That's a question for Sandra, I that presume. Sandra? Sandra, are you there? Uh, you, the sound went off and talked, so I didn't hear the question. Um, so, so if it's a used piece of equipment, can we take out a, a, just a regular loan from the bank? I, I, yeah, I, yeah. Uh, well, it's up to the bank. The loan, as long as the loan does not exceed the life of the equipment, that's really all the bank is looking for. But we have to ask the bank. Right. And the, that dealer, the dealer may seek for that. Yeah, I will. In, I will investigate that tomorrow to find out whether or not we can, you know, how we can pay for it. Okay. I'm getting the sense that we're inclined to buy it. Is that right? But we may not be quite ready to make the decision. Yeah, I mean, the Massey Ferguson is a is considered a quality model that holds up well, um, and can. You know, parts are available for it. Don Hawkins, who looked at our sad one, I strongly recommended um, the Mackie Ferguson. And I just think long term it's going to save us a lot more money than trying to rent mm -hmm. and then being restricted to very limited time frames and not being able to get yeah. everything that we need to do. But. Toby, the four four weeks that uh, that's in there associated with it, uh, kind of cost estimate, was that? Is that four weeks that was performed this year? No, so we only did three weeks this year, um, <clears throat> which was less than the 28,000, but we did not complete all the roads and the roadside mowing in town with those three weeks. 
So I extrapolate it to four at, at a minimum, and that's why it's 28,000 in that line item. Right. Um, and that, inclu that includes both spring and fall all together at the 28,000. So it's eight, eight weeks total in that line item. And that doesn't necessarily mean that in those four weeks in spring and fall that we can get all the roads mowed in that four week window. That makes sense. Yeah. Because yep. it only and can be run 40 hours a week if it's restrictive. Uh, That's the rule with, with the rental. With the rental. With the rental. With the rental. Yeah, 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 yeah. 60 yeah. hours. Yeah. You know. And that was just uh, that was just mowing, right? Uh, right, Toby. That that didn't uh, in, uh, include any uh, any pruning or, or tree work or anything like that. That's correct. It was mostly all just uh, mow roadside mowing, <clears throat> and only a single pass. So if there's some areas where a second pass would help, you know, clear more view shed and safety line of sights. Um, we didn't back up and redo a second pass. It was just a single pass with the, with the mower. And, and the other thing is that um, there were days that we didn't go out to mow because the weather was terrible and it wasn't, wasn't appropriate. So we probably lost a day or two in that three week period where we were not utilizing the equipment. Well, there were days that it worked on the weekend. Because right, and if we, you know, if we owned our own machine, we would have the flexibility to mow when, when the weather was right and the crew was was working, and it essentially would give us a better result of mowing around the roadsides in town. Was the last one that was purchased and now has died? That it was, was dead a, when it arrived. Right, yes. exactly. <laughs> uh, was that? Paid for in a lump sum or over a course of a couple of they years? They purchased it for seventeen thousand. I'm pretty sure they just in a paid lump for sum. it outright. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it was it was just a purchase. So I kind of like to get a straw poll here because I think we want to at least get the sense of where we are. Where are you guys on this? Uh <clears throat> I'm kind of getting back to my original diatribe. I guess I don't love the idea of of mowing, but I, I understand the logistical challenges of it, and I don't have anything to really kind of compare it to. Um, you know, I, I think uh, there's value in having the machine. I don't. I don't really see much of a need to do the lease to own and say let's budget for it buy it um, but I think uh, over the next year we should look at how much time is being spent mowing and how that affects everything else and what else needs to be done and you know we can always sell it it's a good tractor so yeah. equipment tends to hold its value as long as you're not abusing it so uh, if if it doesn't get abused um, and the calculus isn't working out, I, don't, I think it's a fairly low risk um, relative to how much it's going to cost to rent one. Um, and I'm sure it's not going to be any cheaper to pay somebody to do it. So, Jamie, I gather. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So. Yeah, no, I don't need to ask you guys. I, know what, I mean, I assume you're... Thanks for holding out long enough to find a used one, Toby. <laughs> <laughs> well, it just, it just popped up. I didn't, I didn't really uh, have anything to do with the delay in purchasing. I just uh, just kept my ears to the ground. So, I Toby, the, yeah, the clear sense is we, we want to do it. Um, so, move forward. Okay, so I'll talk to them tomorrow. I'll call and find out... Um, if there's any financing available that we could do through them, um, I'll work with Sandra to see um, what the bank would do as far as a, a lease, I mean a loan other than a lease. And then we'll just figure out what, you know, how to do the financing to go ahead, to move ahead before we make the final um, purchase. Great. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Um, do you need me for anything else on highway budget? Um, Kari, where are we going next? Or it's... We, we know wherever, I mean, 
How much uh, more time do we want to give this? It's well, we had scheduled till 8.30 okay. to, to keep going. Uh, you guys well, okay? Are there, any, are there any other questions about the, about the well, budget? Are they in the, in the highway budget under stuff? I have a question. Uh, for the new foreman position, was there also insurance added in for that? Yes. All the benefits. Okay. Yeah. We just had to scroll there. Yeah. yeah. So things you had mentioned the other day, like with things like gravel and sand, mm -hmm. because we had had the discussion at our previous meeting about the wash versus the unwash, and now that McCullough's is closed. Yep. Um, I think there's a possibility of saving a lot of money there. On sand? Yeah. Uh, wash sand versus clean sand. I mean, or bank run sand. You're going to have some rocks, but what you're spending on wash sand is pretty expensive. And then having to mix the stone into it afterwards. I just think you could, you could probably put out bids to the local gravel pits to be able to get a better number. You know, yeah. we need, I haven't seen the number for how many yards they go through. I'm going to guess it's probably around 6,000 yeah. roughly. Uh, you probably get a lot better number than that, I would think. Toby, are you still there? Did we ever bid for those things before? No, because we had a we had a pit right behind oh, the yeah, there we go. right behind the shop. <laughs> and, um, and it's door shop. And essentially, the trucking was next to zero. Right. Yeah. Which so so that's what's so that's what's going to change in the sand um, function is. There's going to be a lot of trucking and time on the road. Now, do you think putting putting something like that out to bid to even haul would be cheaper than them hauling it themselves? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'd have to look at the invoicing on sand to find out how many cubic feet or cubic yards that we actually bring in every year. I mean, the budget, the, the actual last year was 40700 um, and, and so I guess we'd have to do, do the math or find out how many um, cubic yards that is, and then we could put it out to bid. Um, the one thing you, you probably realize is our sand pile is not easy to dump to because it's way up in the woods behind where the shop is, and so uh, you know a large tractor trailer full of sand can't get up there and dump. So that you know it has to be hauled in, t in ten wheel trucks. Right. Um, so the, the trucking is going to essentially add a cost to the sand that's not going to be there, but it's going to be wear and tear and manpower. So does this this sand budget include the stone that's bought to mix in it afterwards? I, I guess so. It all depended on how it was coated. I don't know. I was not involved in the coating of okay. the stone that went in. Okay. But I'm assuming I'm assuming it ended up in there because it was all meant for the sand pile. We no, essentially we have to look um, if if you ask Sandra to give you an itemized listing of that line item so you can see where all the charges were, we can see who provided it and, and what was included in um, in that line item. Well, I guess the other the other challenge that we have is that. It, you kind of alluded to it as our is our storage issue and that kind of comes into the the bidding even if you can get a number and sort out the trucking that keeping the volume somewhere is is a unique challenge for for us uh, right well, and, well it, you know it works fine right now it's just the limitation is that you can't get a big tractor trailer full of sand in there but it save you money on trucking um, but you, you can't dump it, the tractor trailer can't go up on the top of the pile and dump it. It has to be dumped by a 10 wheeler. So well, and we could probably that. also save, save on the trucking, but also save, you know, a, at least a couple bucks uh, a yard, I would imagine, on, on going to somebody and saying, this is the allocation that we need and we'll be ready to take it over the next week. You know, that, that could put a pretty decent dent in the material cost, but we don't have anywhere 
to put it in, even if we did, we have to think about, you know, if we're going to spread it around in smaller piles around town, uh, then you have a loading issue. I'm wondering, like, if we've approached any of the neighboring towns that might have the storage capacity to do like a bulk buy where their, their equipment, their loading equipment's already there. Can we buy cooperatively and, and store at their facility where they have equipment? So, so Jordan, the problem is if you have more than one sand pile, you have to have more than one loader to load your trucks when you're using it. Um, and it, we've talked about you know storing in different places, but then you have to drive the loader all over town every time you change the position of the other pile on the other side of town. Well, it's easier to get to there, but now you need a second loader. Unless it's uh, another so, town's, unless it's another town's loader, or somebody right, else has like, a loader there. Well, and again, so now you'd have to have a mutual aid agreement with the other town. And um, I'm, again, I'm not sure who's appropriate there, whether Woodbury is close enough to where we end up or whether it would be Worcester um, or even East Montpelier that where we would share, we would share a resource. Mm. Yeah, I think, we'll just, I think we just put it out to bid and find out how many cubic yards we need and send it out to the local suppliers of sand and see what we get. We're not likely to do that in time for this budget, are we? <clears throat> well, what we can do I is so. I can figure out what, what we've purchased in the past per year and then we can see what the prices are in different uh, pits and we can just throw that number in for the time being. Yeah, because I think okay. they had, like priced out a pit, but it'd be nice to have that. Okay. Can you come back to us by our next meeting with that? Oh, sure. No problem. Great. Okay. Thanks. Yep. Can we, can I pick it one other line item? Yeah. Are we doing, category? are we doing highway? Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Uh, so can, you, can you talk a minute about the 7,000 for line striping? It's for you uh, too. Yeah. It was the first time last year and No, and that didn't happen this year. It was supposed to happen. So so the the line striping is to pay for white fog lines on the pavements. The yellow is taken care of by the state of Vermont, so they do the yellow lines for us. We don't do that. So the, the line striping is just for the um, the white lines on the county road and the other paved roads in town. So that was budgeted for this year, but not done. So we're just carrying it over to next year. Is that? Well, I'm not sure how you carry over. You'd have to talk mm -hmm. to Sandra about what more funds remain at the end of the fiscal year and whether. They get spent on tractors. tractors. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the early <laughs> well, the highway funds get rolled into the equipment oh, fund. Oh yeah, that's we're buying a tractor with it. Yeah, somehow we bought a one hundred and thirty thousand dollar tractor with seven thousand dollars. It's pretty remarkable. <laughs> yeah, yeah, time to go home. Before <laughs> <laughs> the change of mind. Um, and so, yeah, so the line striping is important because those fog lines are very important for traveling up and down the county road at night in the fog. Did you get your yep. question answered? Yep. Other questions for Toby right now while he's here. Heads are shaking, Toby. So I, I think you can... Good. Oh, you go. No, I'm not so bad. Take your head. I'm very good. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. All right. See you. Thanks, Toby. Thanks, Toby. Thank you. Um, Kari, looking at your uh, list, although I'm also looking at some drooping eyelids around here, including right. mine, um, the next one up would be single audit, I guess, although there's not much we can do about that, is there? Right, and it's a requirement if we're going to accept all that FEMA yeah. money. The only other question I had, there, does the, I know there was the funding of the East Calais Community Store that also is tipping us through it or towards an audit. 
And then FEMA just kind of blew it all out of the water anyway. But yeah. does that single big audit count as as like the event or does there need to be like a separate auditing of that project? Is that going to be like another four thousand yeah. dollar project? In yeah, addition to the but FEMA the good news account? about that one is there's enough left in the grant to pay for the audit. Oh, right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Yep. This budget um, includes ten thousand for the single audit, so be two major events which we made. Yes, but the next one is six thousand, uh, four thousand. I think the it's four thousand right. for so the next. So if we do one. if we do end up with two major projects, mm -hmm. right? We're, we're good, yeah. And then the next one up, you say uh, your list is technology reserve fund. Yeah. That's yeah. is that written in stone? Do we have to do that, or can we? Where does that number come from? Uh, I don't know. Nine thousand a year. Who's trying to buy it? Oh, we, uh, we, have to, we have to buy a server. Yes. Uh, every, uh, every, hey, every, hey, every, hey, every, hey, every, you hear you got an every, echo every, going every, on. Do you have? Are you using two accounts or? No, no, I know, but I know. Wow. Was I echoed by echoed before? Wait, it, no. it's gotten two echoes. There's two seconds. We told you that we're tired. <laughs> <laughs> if, I, if I chat, read that aloud. Read that aloud. Well, actually, Tegan, I think I can probably explain it. Uh, so, uh, the the reserve fund for IT is, was was predominantly created um, to make sure that we were funding for the replacement of uh, on-premise server. Um, and it has to be replaced every uh, every five years. Uh, I, I, what I don't know is whether or not we're coming up on needing to replace it. I don't think we are. I think we're another year or two out. Two years out. Thank you, Deegan. <laughs> um, and that's a somewhat soft number. I mean, it's a pretty important piece of equipment, so I, I wouldn't... I wouldn't punt it too far, but you know you could probably do an evaluation um, with uh, RB Tech relative to what your backup situation. We have a pretty good backup situation. It, it's pretty easy to replace them pretty quickly as long as you've got a good backup. So, um, so yeah, p potentially you could you could defund that for a year if it were already adequately adequately funded. Is it already adequately funded? I know, I guess funded? we should just have uh, it. Because it's, 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 it'd be on the balance sheet. My guess is that it's probably getting pretty close. How much do you need to have in that fund? Oh, probably 25,000 dollars or something like that. 25,000. I'm not seeing it in the report. Sandra, do you know where, where that's at? I don't see it where I'm looking at the on in the town report on the report of capital special revenue funds. I don't Hang on for a quick second. I lost my internet and was disconnected. Do you know what the balance is, current balance is in the technology reserve fund? Let me. Oh, is that the I one can... called the Technology Fund? Hang on. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Then I'll it looks like thirteen thousand. I got it. Twelve thousand nine hundred and five dollars. Well, let's see if uh, w what it is now. Oh, that's right. That I'm, was as of twenty-two. I think the uh, prior board spent out of that. I'm not sure. Oh. Technology fund is twenty, yeah, twenty three four forty nine to twenty one. So you're good. Yeah. So, I mean, you're almost there. We're we're pretty close, uh, and it may not even be like a full, you know, full blown replacement, like a twenty five thousand dollar chart. That would be like a that would be like a full full deployment of all of the pieces of hardware for running it. So I, you know, I'd say. You could probably pretty comfortably skip a year. RB Tech wouldn't love that idea. Uh, <laughs> but if if we're all the same people next year and we knew what we were what we were talking about, you know, I think that, that that's probably reasonable. Or we could we could just dial it back. 
Uh, I'm not seeing the number. I kind of lost track of nine. Page nine. Oh no, it's in there for nine thousand. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Then I'd, I'd yeah. say you could. Yeah. Pull that out, or we could yeah. we could go down to twenty five hundred. Which is what they did last year. Oh, gross. Yeah. Were, <laughs> let's be bold. Yeah. Let's yeah, they went down to twenty five hundred. It had been eight thousand the two years before that. Um, yeah. Do you want to check anything before not really. saying that for sure? I mean, the only question is whether or not we've we've made any particular withdrawals from it relative to uh, you know new new equipment that we've purchased. But I, it doesn't oh, sound like we have. So it, it sounds like it. it would, yeah, so I would, I would say let's be, let's be bold. Let's pull out $9,000. Okay. Great. We'll Are you having a heart attack, Tegan, or? I, I don't like I don't like talk, 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 um, uh, Oh, no. No, no. <laughs> I, I do no, think she's no, logged no, in I, under I, Tegan I, and Team Callis. I think she's logged in twice. Because I saw both I, Tegan I, on the I, screen I, and Team Callis on the screen. Well, now I've lost my house to get back together because I'm not even going to take my um, um, What I wanted, what I wanted to say was, I think they started for a certain number. Where was that 25,000? Did anybody get that? That we're at 25,000 or we're close? Uh, no, that, it, that it's going to be significantly more than 25,000. Right. Oh, I didn't catch that. The, the, in, in, in my memory, 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 right now, right now. Um, um, Tegan, maybe if you spoke more slowly, we could get you. <laughs> I tried. I tried writing and writing in the chat. Oh, can you can you see the chat, Kari? Is she typing in the chat? Where's the chat? <laughs> You might have to stop sharing your screen. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah. There it there is. That file well, also allows us to replace all computers as needed, and we haven't replaced any since I've been here. The server is more than you're estimating, but I can't find my numbers at home. So. So this is a potential area. Yeah, it sounds yeah. like a conversation. Yeah. Give us a couple weeks to be had. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. It's fair it. Fair points, Tegan. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Why don't, why don't we look at this list of heavy hitters here? So, interactive map program. I, I believe Sandra had a suggestion there. We could use. There's a reserve fund for the planning commission. Did I get that right? There's so oh. am I on? Yes. Uh, I am I on? <laughs> yes. So somehow uh, it's I don't know if it's your side or my side, but on my side anyway, we're going in and out. I'll talk as fast as I possibly can. The okay. interactive program that six thousand dollars is to um, is for the initial setup. And the three thousand dollar annual fee, forevermore, uh, for that program. The listers indicated to me that they really would have liked to get that online ASAP, which would be fiscal year twenty this year, fiscal year twenty four. In which case, we could take that $6,000 for the initial setup and the first year's uh, operating costs out of the reappraisal fund because it is a program that would, they say, enhance the uh, reappraisal process. Um, I, I do not know, know if that is accurate or not. I did not... Um, I did not talk to Mr. Claude Felder about that. I believe John McCullough did, but there. Uh, but if 
you wanted to wait until July 1st, 2024. That's your fiscal year 25. You could at least take the $3,000 initial set up fee, that is a one time fee, out of the reappraisal fund. Uh, we have enough in the reappraisal fund. We went over that uh, to be able to take that $3,000 out as long as the board feels that is an appropriate use of that fund. And so that would drop that line item to $3,000. And that line item would remain there for as long as we had the um, use that program. It, it's $3,000 a year at this point in time going forward. Thank you, Lena. So my understanding, we would take three thousand this year from the reappraisal fund. If if you chose to onboard that program in FY twenty four, you would take your three thousand. You would have to take your. You'd have a choice. You take your initial setup fee from the reappraisal fund. So the and, entire $6,000? Was that a, I didn't hear that. I'm sorry, I, I was confused whether by initial fee you meant the entire 6000 or half of it. Half of it. The $3,000 is a one-time setup fee. That's the initial setup fee. Oh, I see. And 3000 is the, okay. Is the, and then 3000 is an annual fee. So you would choose whether you wanted to do this, if you wanted to do it at all, <clears throat> in FY25 or FY24. If you went with FY24, which would mean we'd get that on board a, 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 whenever in the next few months, you could take the $6,000 out of the reappraisal fee or at least half and the other and the uh, other three thousand dollars would be an unbudgeted expense in FY twenty four, or you could wait until FY twenty five, get it all set up, take three thousand dollars again out of the reappraisal fee, and then just budget the three thousand dollar annual fee, which will be an annual fee. It will be in your budget for as long as you use that program. But it doesn't have to be three thousand dollars in FY twenty five. It, uh, pardon me, it doesn't need to be budgeted at six thousand dollars in FY twenty five. It can be budgeted at three thousand dollars, with the understanding that you would take the initial set up fee out of the reappraisal fund. Got it. And you need to check with Claude um, and Claude Felter to make sure that's okay. It. No, you, you you folks would want to interview John McCullough and ask him what Mr. Claude Felder said. Uh, John McCullough and um, Jan Olson are the point people on this particular item. I just happened to be in the office that day and um, John and I explored if the reappraisal fund could handle the setup fee. And it can. You have you have enough money in there. Yeah, I think John said he'd be willing to come in and give a presentation to the board, which I think I would kind of enjoy. And I think we should probably bring in the webmaster and maybe any other kind of stakeholders. My impression is that this resource would be pretty pretty valuable uh, through throughout the town. And it, for work yes. being done in a couple of different uh, applications, but I, I hear what Sandra's saying. And whether we make the decision to do it now or later, it, it just has to be the three thousand dollars. We just have to remember to use use the fees that are already yeah. held. Presentation for us. would yeah. be helpful, yeah. though. I think because it's kind of a <coughs> complicated thing, and I would want to know, like, if you can really use it anywhere. Like anyone, in, like we could all use it in our different areas of town. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't be exclusive to one area. It'd be like an online mm -hmm. interactive. It would be similar to our other to our other interactive map with just a, more bells and whistles. Okay. 
Are you saying we should have them come in at the next meeting? I'm a little worried about a timing thing. I don't think it has to be the next we're, meeting. Oh, okay. So for budget could, purposes, I think we could probably go ahead and go budget ahead. for 3000 and yeah. plan on tapping the reappraisal fund. It's just a matter of when we want to do that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. okay. Good. Set. Uh, next one is the swim area dock. I guess that was a one-time request for oh, me. Boy. We have to do that, don't we? Mm -hmm. I know, but I think that's one of those things that you could probably find. I mean, Curtis Pond in fundraising was able to get some pretty big donations. It seems like a community member with resources might be willing to donate. Yeah, they did do a, I don't know the numbers off the top of my head, but I know they did a fundraiser, which I believe raised half the funds. Uh, for the project, and they were asking the town for the other half of the funds. Um, for the raft? For the raft. And you would suggest the same thing here? Give them 2500 Oh, I, I wasn't necessarily no. saying that. I was saying, mm -hmm. I believe that the $5,000 request is half the cost of the whole project. So oh, overall it's 10 000. Exactly. Yeah. And that they dog, raised right? half it's of it. Bad. $10,000 for a dock? Really? A raft. No, the raft is done. We're talking oh. about the dock now. So oh, the dock, dock, right. you remember they came you're right. the fancy schmancy. The, I think they no, asked us right. to pay for the whole thing. thing. Yeah, you're right. I was confused with the raft. You want to knock that down to 2500 I think that there's a lot of generous <clears throat> folks in the community that might be willing to sponsor the... I, I think that's reasonable. I also am wondering about the swim fund. I know that we never seem to use for anything. Right. Is, is there a chunk of money in the swim fund that could be allocated to this, or is that just for... That's what we did with the dock. Instructors. Is I that what believe, we did with the dock? No, I thought that yeah. was for um, maintenance, um, flash removal, things right. like that. Isn't that what they told us? And Water testing. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we it's only $1,500. Okay, yeah. So we wouldn't want to dip into that. For no. the swim fund. And then, uh, and I thought that they had a, a pot of money that they could use for other Crude money somewhere that they had not tapped into. No. Uh, not that I'm aware of. No, I don't think so. What is the increase of? Yeah. The increase is the dollar. For the dollar. Yeah. It's five thousand. Yes, and how is it not? Whitman going to get additional bids? He'd gotten one. You know, bid he from was. Doctors. He was. You're right. And it might be worth checking with him to right. see. Well, he was going to research <laughs> if it would be cheaper to build one than buy one. One of them is trying to butt in. Do you, <laughs> do you want me to follow up with Mark? Yes, please. Okay. Yeah. Tegan, are you trying to say something? Sandra. Oh, it's Sandra. Sorry. Please, Sandra. Hi. So the swim fund historically ha has used the swim fund line item, which you see at $1,500, to help support their uh, swim lessons. It, it has been as high as $3,000 in the past, and that would help that would that plus uh, the swim lesson fees paid for the in instructor's salaries. The swim fund is also tasked uh, with paying for um, the trash services and the port -a let So that's what that $1,500 goes for. I do not know if they are going to do swim lessons this year, but they have currently $1,700 in their account to be used toward the port -a let the water testing and um, the trash removal services that, uh, and that really may not be enough to cover all of their costs. That $5,000 for the dock 
I believe is to cover the whole price of the dock. Uh, I'm, I'm not real clear on that. They have roughly $5,800 in their Vanguard fund. The Vanguard fund is viewed as an endowment and is restricted to being able to use um, the interest. And it is several years old. The initial um, donation is kind of lost to history, but at a prior select board stopped the use of that funds at 5,000. So it has grown to 58. Uh, I'd have to look at that exactly, but it has grown, I think, to uh, roughly $5,800. So theoretically, $800, if they wanted to use all of the growth, could come out of that Vanguard fund and be applied toward uh, purchasing this stock. Again, this goes back several years, but the SWIM committee ha is tasked with maintaining the dock, the raft, the trash services, the water testing, and the uh, porta potty, and this is you know, and giving swim lessons. So um, that's what that fifteen hundred dollars is supposed to cover. If they're going to give swim lessons, they're not going to make it. They'll go in the in the red probably. Yeah. With a with a with a fifteen hundred dollar appropriation. My, my understanding. They're also, they're also, they're also they're getting, also getting payment from payment. the family. The family is very, yeah. very small. Yeah. Right. My my understanding last I heard is they're not super optimistic about finding an instructor for this year. Oh, no. They're still okay. trying, but they're really struggling to line somebody up. Yeah. Yeah. Then then that fifteen hundred dollars ought to be sufficient to cover their obligation to maintain that recreational space in terms of trash, water testing, and uh, port a -let. As mm -hmm. far as the doc is concerned, maybe uh, they could tap into that Vanguard fund. Okay. Well, we'll hear from Mark as to whether he's, he's able to get that <laughs> price down. Fundraising. Right. And fundraising. Okay, so the next one is the dam bond. We talked about that. It's just a big ticket item that the voters approved. We'll have to remind them that. Yes. Now we have to pay for it. Approving was the easy part. Um, fire truck loan. I think we're committed to that. Right. Mowing, we've talked about. We've talked about road materials. Fire and ambulance service. That's a tough one because it's basically presented to us and not exactly take it or leave it, but it's kind well, of Well, we can areas. talk about it on the 14th when we go to their meeting. That's where they're doing their budget. I did find another one um, when I was looking through that I hadn't noticed before. Let me try to find it. It was a uh, Professional assessor for six thousand dollars is a new a new item. That is that is that the uh, new property? Is it like a is that a contract with Nemric for property assessments that have to happen? Like yes, yeah, Sandra, next can year? can you answer what that one is? The, the professional assessor, it, the listers are anticipating the retirement of, I think, most of them, and they feel you're going to have to, at this point, given the climate we're in, you're going to have to hire an assessor. So the as this amount of money, this $6,000 is a precursor. This is for three months of the year from April to June. Which, uh, let's see, um, I'm just looking for the listers section. There is a note there, professional set prorated for the end of FY25. $25,000 a year is the estimate that the listers have 
um, to for the town to hire an assessor. And this is uh, just that last uh, quarter of the year with the anticipation that in FY26, you're going to have a $25,000 item in that cell, not $6,000. If, if we do have the professional assessor for the fourth quarter, would would we not have the listers working as many hours? Like, would there be a little bit of offset there? Because the lister wage is going up too, indicates to me they're anticipating that for the full year, which yeah, seems like a little over an hour. The, the lister wages went up because they're anticipating additional time for the reappraisal, which is set to start in July and FY at the beginning of FY25, end of FY24, and go for maybe eight or nine months. It's all gonna be in FY25. I think they figure it will go from July um, 2024 to April 2025. And they are anticipating having to participate in that. That's why they are um, they increase their wages. And then in FY twenty five and um, in March of twenty five, which is our next nope uh, in in March of twenty. But let me think. In March of twenty four, I think. Aunt, you have a couple of a couple of listers stepping down. Is that is that or they'll step down in March of twenty five? So at the so end, only, from March to twenty five to June twenty five, you're going to need a professional assessor. That's what I understood her note to say. Yeah, that's right. So only one lister term expires this coming March. And that's Wilson, and I've heard he's not planning on running for office. So the question will be, will there be a lister seat on the ballot to try to elect a new lister to replace Wilson for a three-year term or any portion of the three-year term? I, I, I am unable to address that question, Barbara. And I'm only uh, I'm relying on uh, Jan Olson's note to her budget proposal, which included this six thousand dollars. I have not spoken with Jan personally, but she did make a pre. I thought she came in and made a presentation to the board, when but she perhaps she only sent in her written proposal with notes. No, you're reminding us. You're telling us exactly what she said. Yeah. All right, I don't know that there's much we can do about that one. <laughs> okay. Uh, what do you say? Everybody had enough? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> it's going? <laughs> I think you picked up everyone with your 2 a.m. start. <laughs> yeah. Okay, shall we, shall we wrap that one up for now and come back to it next week? Or next in two weeks. All right. Thanks, Kari sure. and Sandra. <laughs> um, let's see. Did we do the vote to accept the donation? We did. Mm -hmm. Jordan, do you have anything on IT? I have one other quick Curtis Pond one. Okay. Um, that came in today. There's a fifty thousand dollar grant. Um, that we are applying for that uh, we think is a really good match for this project. Um, and it requires two letters of support. And so we don't have to vote on this today necessarily, but I put in the board folder a draft letter of support that Marge wrote. Wasn't there a deadline for that December 15th? Y yes. So it would be ideal if we 
were ready to approve it tonight so it could be included in the packet. When, when did you put that in the folder? This morning. Oh, when my internet was out. Right. <laughs> okay. I emailed it to everybody too. Yeah, but it when was the internet midday was when the internet was out. Maple Corner. You know, <laughs> I just got it from Marge when my internet. Is came this back a short on. letter? Can you read it to us? It's a it's a page long. It goes through the history of the dam. Um, it outlines the funding mechanisms that we have in place. It talks about the partnership between the town and the CPA, the money that's been raised by individuals, um, and just says that the town, uh, that the grant would help the town take this important step in and preserving who, who's this. who's the grant from? So, uh, Vermont Outdoor Recreation Economic Collaborative, which is part of the Vermont Agency of Natural Resources, Parks, Parks and Rec. And are there any strings attached? Uh, it did not sound like it, no. Um, and so why are we eligible for it? What's, it, what's the purpose of the grant? Um, it's people recreate and it generates uh, economic benefit. <laughs> uh, Maybe. Um, Is yeah. there any We we don't know what you said. Part of the town, Jamie. Say that again. She said no. There's no strings attached. Is there a match? Oh, is there a match? Um, I, I will, I... No match. I don't actually have a copy of the whole grant application, but I will send it around when I get it from Marge. And when did you say it needs to be signed by? Um, like, I think it's like two days after our next meeting. So Marge was... Hoping we move forward today, but I think if we're generally in support but want more information, I think that's I right. think that we can push it to the next meeting. Okay, and you'll um, get us the rest of that. And we'll get the rest of the details. Okay, so I'll put it on the next agenda. Is that it for Curtis Pond now? Yep. Thank you, Jordan. Anything on IT? Uh, no, not other than uh, wanting to follow up with the conversation that Tegan and I had uh, with RB and uh, schedule a training of sorts. I guess a, a, a focused work session with, uh, with them to start diving into the shared document structure, um, which is going to kind of get into, um, I think, uh, permissions um, and record retention and that sort of thing. So it's kind of top of mind for me. And that's likely going to come with some expense, I guess, because it's going to be a special project for them. I don't know how much time. So Tegan, I guess we might need like a proposal. Like, do you, do you have time to like reach out to RB and ask them what a, what the cost would be for like a scope of work for uh, teams roll out, I guess. Yeah, yeah. If you have, if you have a specific thing we you want me to discuss with them, just a mail list, a mail list. I think it's a better idea, better idea to talk in the conference in order to cover. Yeah, I'll send you an email. Okay, okay. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, oh, sign board orders. Uh, they've gone around, and I think we've signed them, but can we have a motion to approve the board orders? So moved. Uh, so moved. Okay. I'll take that as a second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. And finally, uh, Shed v. Callis. Uh, yeah, I think it'd be worth going into uh, executive session uh, to have a, a quick update on that. Um, I don't have the language. 
Oh, for the executive session? Yeah. Uh, you want to go into executive oh, let's session let's under on the agenda. under one VSA section three thirteen Rose. It's in the agenda there. Yeah, I have it right here. Oh, yeah. Who's did you make that motion, Jordan? Uh, yeah, we're in. It doesn't really matter. Um, Jordan moved and Jamie seconded to go into executive <laughs> session. Yep. Under and you've got the quote there. Uh, before we do that, um, is there any other business, or can we sort of let everybody go? I think we can let. Does anybody have stipend paperwork for me? I do. 